Hi! I just realized that I hadn't adjusted my uh, face cam. How's it going? Hi! Why aren't I, I muted? I just realized that I hadn't adjusted my uh, Sorry. face cam. That's so weird. I don't know why that wasn't muted. I watched it through YouTube, like not the YouTube page, but the other one, you know? Anyway, you probably don't know. <laughs> How are you guys? Hi, Megan. Hi, Terry. I'm trying to see my whole chat window here. <laughs> Hi, Dar. Welcome, welcome. Happy Saturday. Let me, um, I'm going to make my chat window a little smaller. I still have my chat window issue. Okay. Can you guys hear me still? <laughs> it's like suddenly so quiet. I was like, wait. Oh, I know. So these are my samples for the gift sewing. I had some fun making a few samples because I'm testing out some patterns for you guys. Hi, other Megan. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. Terry, thank you for always telling me and reassuring me. Hi, Hollery. How's it going? Cool. So I need, I'm going to, oh, I know what I can do. I'm going to swap my windows. That's what I usually do, right? You guys don't know. <laughs> You're like, whatever, Sammy. Let me get that up there. Why is it such a struggle today? Okay, so welcome. Today we're sewing some kids clothes um, by Poppy and Jazz Patterns. And this is a sponsored stream from Hearts Fabric. They supplied all of the fabrics and patterns. So thanks, Hearts. And I know some folks don't do a lot of kids sewing and we don't do a lot of kids sewing here um, only because really I don't have any small children in my life that I sew for. Um, but they are a really great way to build your skills up because you don't have to do whatever it is you have to do on the, the project for very long. It's less fabric and it's faster to sew. And if you know you kind of want to like up your skill game, it's a really great way to experiment. I mean, because some some of the kids' clothes can be have all the exact same skills. So, hi Melin, hi Maribel, hi Eliza, how's it going? I know Megan, right? But then we wouldn't sew for ourselves as much. Megan, I actually was looking today for you for a magnolia dress um, sewing tutorial. I kind of poked around a little bit. I think I may have saw one or two, but I'm not sure. It looked like a different dress named Magnolia. Yes, this bird print is cute, <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> so um, I picked up this fabric when I went to that quilt show with my mom. Um, there were actually a few vendors there and fabric vendors there from the like county that I'd never heard of, which was really cool because I got to see other fabric stores. And you know, that's like a potential day trip, right? So this bird print, my mom loves birds. And so I, this one, and there was a white background and I'm kind of hoarding the white background because I really like it. But look, yeah, they were all wearing these little flower crowns on their head. My mom loves bird, birds and stuff. Like she has a favorite bird, you know, and um, the, I was just at her house last night and apparently she has this little bird visitor and he is, or she, I think it's a he, is obsessed with looking at himself in the side view mirror of their truck, which is parked in front of their kitchen window so he can see it. And he sits there just totally flirting with it and hanging out with it. And um, my niece has named him Miri because he's obsessed with himself in the mirror. And um, my husband was trying to identify the bird last night and he thinks it's this oh shoot, I'm totally spacing the name of it, but um, that it shouldn't be this far south. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of in the Finch family. It's tiny, it has this little red dot straight on its head. So um, they're leaving on a trip today to go see my sister and um, her kids and her husband. And so they were a little worried about this little bird. So they mounted a mirror on the fence by where the truck is parked with a little perch. So <laughs> the little video is super cute though. Oh, you're making, you're going to make your sister's dog a doggy coat. I want to do that too, Megan. Do you have a pattern? I want to make one for, I finally have a dog I can do that for. Yeah. You sew mainly for your nieces. Yeah, it's fast It's little, it doesn't use a lot of fabric and you can use all the really fun fabrics um, and all the fun prints like in quilting cottons because drape isn't as important, you know? 
Hi, Ida. I know, isn't that cute? Hi, Carol. Oh, yeah, and then they put they uh, they also put a little perch right outside their kitchen window, and apparently he's been sitting there. He has a buddy, so he's not alone, but I, I don't know. A mini <laughs> Oh, full-size poodle. Poodles love the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, it's pretty cute. But I'll keep you posted about Mary. That's his name. So <laughs> see if we learn any more. All right, so we've been talking about... Um, we're taking a break next week, so no streams next week. And then the following week when we come back, we are full on into gift sewing. <laughs> so, you know, kind of. Um, so I I started feeling a little overwhelmed, I'm gonna be totally honest, because I was like, how am I gonna prepare stuff to sew for, for pretty much we'll cut one day and then I'll sew for the other four days. I, my dream is to like stream every day, right? So it's kind of a dream week, but at the same time, I can't get anything else done in my natural day to day as far as work goes. So um, I really need to be prepared. And I also wanna set ourselves up to succeed. So I wanna make sure we have projects we can get through a few of at a time. Cause if you wanted to sew a few of the same thing, it's nice to have something that's actually something people really want, that's really useful and you can get through it pretty quickly. So I'm kind of troubleshooting some of those things. Hi, Louise. Yeah, listen away. A turtle shape design. <laughs> now you're doing it. <laughs> He's turning one. Wait, are you making a turtle costume? <laughs> so, um, anywho, um, I whittled it down a tiny bit. Um, and maybe we can get to those other ideas at some point. I'm also trying to make it so that you guys aren't having to go out and buy patterns. Um, and I don't know why I'm doing that because it's putting more work on me, but maybe because I just really want you guys to join in and have some things you really want. So, you know, no coat, okay. Well, is it a turtle coat? I'm trying to figure it out. A turtle, it's, it's gonna be easy to create a turtle shape design. You just mean because you just need like a flat, like basically a little mini blanket, right? That's what you're talking about. I see what you mean. Oh, Megan. All right, so I have a graphic of, okay. So here, I'm gonna first show you my calendar. I'm pretty sure my mic is still on, you can tell me. Um, yeah, I can see my mic still on. All right, so that first week when we come back on December 3rd. So I'm gonna be streaming Tuesday through Saturday, so five days, and we'll start cutting on that Tuesday. And then the following week, we're gonna revisit our basic bodice slopers um, and then draft the sleeves. So I still need to prep all that. And then the following week before um, my holiday week is the Cascade Duffel Coat by Greenline Studio. Oh, I have a spelling error. Oh my gosh. Wow. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I don't like spelling errors. Hi, <laughs> live, love, and learn. How's it going? <laughs> no worries, no worries. Oh my God, yeah, his coat is a live minky blanket. It, but doesn't he have hair, not fur? Yeah, easily fixed with the, the spelling thing? I can't, I'd have to go into the program and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, you know what I'm talking about. All right, and so the next thing I'm gonna show you is the gifts we're thinking about, and then I'll show you some samples. So this is the schedule. We're going to do the, um, I'm gonna provide you guys a boxy bag pattern that you can use as a DOP kit. And that is going to be available for free for all the Patreon subscribers. And then, and this is actually a boxy bag I had in my line of chicken boots. People scream for this pattern. Um, it's not even released yet. And it's not gonna be the actual pattern I'm releasing, but it is going to be, you know, you're getting a quick and dirty version. Uh, then we're gonna, we're gonna do the Decades of Style One Yard Bias Cut Apron. Um, and that is sponsored by Hearts Fabric and Decades of Style together. Then we're gonna do um, some dish carriers and this fingertip oven mitt design that I'm working on. Um, and then Saturday, I'm going to sew my cupcake and pie slice patterns, um, which is the only pattern I actually sell myself right now. And then if someone said they wanted a, uh, I was looking back on the notes when we were coming up with this list and someone said they wanted a zippered pouch and I just, I don't remember who that was, but just so you know, if you subscribe to my newsletter, you get a Notions case pattern for free. It's my chicken boots one that I always had. Yeah, so I've been working on this fingertip oven mitt. 
Oh, thanks for subscribing, Sophia. So I'm working on it fitting, and I think I'm going to make it in a couple of sizes for different hands. But right now, um, this is working pretty good. It's pretty simple to sew. It does have this little arch here and here, and then you can see inside, I'm playing with the idea of putting a, like a little elastic loop that you slip your hand in there. This would be a great puppet pattern too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then uh, hopefully my mom's not watching because I'll probably give her this one. I was like, what's that? It's a pin. I almost poked myself. But yeah, this pattern's really, this pa fabric's really cute. This will be a really great stash busting thing. Is, does anyone have tips on what you use on the inside for the heat resistance? Because all I have in here is the lining fabric, the outer fabric, and then two layers of wool felt. That's something I have handy and I feel like it's a really nice stable stable, um, you know, thing to use. I tried it out last night at home, but I didn't really have anything too hot. So. Yeah, so there's a thumb hole, like a lot, I've seen this, a pattern similar like this, but the thumb side was the same side as the hand side, and I feel like this is where we're going wrong. So right now, the thing I'm gonna do to refine it is, this is, this is my engineer brain working, let's see if I can show you an angle. So right here, when this is on my hand, it, it sits right here really nicely, but on this side, it, there's space. So I think I'm going to make it so that it's, kind of a lopsided heart shape. So there's a little bit of an angle like this. So this is gonna expand a little so that it sits even more against your hand. Cause I feel like when it feels secure, it feels better. You know what I mean? Yeah, old cotton towels, that'd be good. Thermal liner. And then I heard someone uh, write, um, yeah, insole bright. Is that what it is, Megan? Does that sound familiar? It could be a shark. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It doesn't really need to, yeah, you just really need, cause like, you know, if you're like, um, I, I cook a lot with my toaster oven cause I have a full convection tabletop toaster oven. I can roast a chicken in there, it's that big. And you know, sometimes you are a little close to the sides of the oven in there cause it's a little more compact. It's a white quilted, okay. So I think you can get this at like major fabric stores. I'm gonna stick to the wool felt because I happen to have a lot of that right now because I've been doing the pin cushions. And if you're planning on doing the cupcake and pie slice pin cushion, you could use that too. So let's see, all right. So then um, here's the little boxy bag pattern I have. Um, I actually seamed it here so that the fabric can be right side up on both sides. I made pants out of this fabric. <laughs> and then it's just a really simple little bag inside and I'm trying to come up with ways you guys will tolerate sewing it because when I sewed these for um, chicken boots they we did these in clear fabric like the whole thing was clear and we would just bind this edge here and then we bound the vertical seams where did we bind oh we bound this seam here on the inside and this seam here on the inside. And then we left these raw. They didn't seem to disrupt anything because it's not fabric that unravels when it's made in clear, right? Oh, okay, Dar. Where do you, is that easy to find? Like literally Teflon, like the brand name Teflon? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Live Love. You can make them in fabrics that'll fit. And I'm gonna try and do it in like a couple sizes so that you could um, have some for larger hands and smaller hands. My hand's probably pretty medium sized. I wanted to try my mom's hand in there, but I didn't want her to see it. Yeah, Megan, that's true. You need stain proof fabric. Just don't use something that can't be, you know, touch high heat. You can find the Teflon. Okay, cool. I thought that was Frederica. I just didn't want to call you the wrong name. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um,. Anywho, so this is the little boxy bag that can be a dop kit. And then I have my dish carrier. So these are something I did when I sold the pin cushions, I did this like before chicken boots. And so I have a round one right here. And so the trick with these is you need a big enough opening to get your dish inside. And so you can put a pie plate in here. This is that pottery I was telling you about, like that my husband, my, my husband, my Father's wife does the Hawaiian quilt style pattern. This is her design. And so 
this is how it looks yeah so anyway it's flat i showed you my version of it um the reason i had trouble so making and selling these was the amount of fabric they take because you literally need four of this size circles you need one that's folded in half on this side and i didn't have enough of this so i seamed it so one two three four and then if you put an interlining like i put an interlining of canvas that gives it a little bit more you know stability along the bottom so you need to make sure that from my experience with using these you can get your dish in there when it's full of food without losing your food out of the dish you know ah megan what are you going to make for your daughter's art supplies oh you mean the um the boxy bag that'd be great and um, uh, if you have that notions case pattern, Megan, and you scale this up, you can attach it right on the side and she'd have a zippered pouch on the outside. I mean, your pies would destroy them. Well, you can cover your pie with something to keep your dish carrier clean, but the dish carriers are washable. The only thing I've learned is you can't use uh, like oil cloth because of the heat. So this is for the casserole size. It's covered in fur because I took it home and, and lint and everything. So this one was always a tricky one because this one I didn't have. My friend had the round one and it was ancient. And so she loved it and she wanted to make one for a friend. So we used hers as a pattern. But it was like it was really ancient. So um, we didn't have an oblong one. What I learned with the oblong one is you can't have these meet. And having the arch is kind of awkward for some reason so I do this elasticized version and it separate and so yeah like you could probably tighten your elastic or cover whatever's in here with something to protect your dish carrier and then you can carry it this way your hands are free when you go to a friend's the only thing is you can't stack things on top of each other you know but you wouldn't be able to anyway if you were taking a potluck dish somewhere they are just one of those things that's handy. I keep it in my linen drawer with all the napkins and things. So, so I'm proposing those. And the one yard bias cut apron by Decades of Style. One yard, you guys. That's kind of nice. <laughs> I use ba a basket sometimes too, Megan, but my handle broke. Um, you can even sew a pocket on one of those to put like the serving utensil, but there's usually room next to your dish for the serving utensils, what I found. Yeah, so, anywho, I hope these are all things you guys are really interested in and you have people you can gift them to or for yourself, you know, nothing wrong with that. And then um, I'm starting to get everything together and hopefully it'll all be available next week a lot to do <laughs> besides that all right so um that leaves out the ipad stand and the and the phone stand and the little cup cozy and here's what i'm thinking i started kind of just poking around on the internet to see how readily available those are and it's like same thing like the oven mitt's pretty readily available but the oven mitt i have a vested interest in that those never work for me. And I feel like a lot of the, even the designs I see people selling, even the free downloads are, they're going to have the same issue I have. And it's just never feels secure. Like I'm always worried the, the, the mitt's going to slip off my hand or um, I'm going to slip off of the dish, you know, hand guards for baskets. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't have, make, have to make my Christmas dress plus my great. What do you mean? <laughs> So, um, Christmas, I don't wear a dress on Christmas. I wear jammies and I made those. I'm just thinking maybe I should make something more festive, but, um, I still have those others cut out. I'm going to sew those first. So the iPad stand and the iPhone stand, the iPad stand, what I saw a lot of people's comments were, was when you scale up the iPhone stand for the iPad, it is this huge thing. It's like this beanbag style that I kept seeing that seemed like the most home so friendly. And there were a few others that were more like um, firm, foldable things, which sounded kind of fun to sew. But I, I looked at a couple and I was like, oh man, there just looks like there could be issues with these. And I don't want to have to redesign this, you know? That's just kind of where I, my mind goes. 
I really into function. And so if something doesn't work, it's hard for me to get behind it. The cup cozy thing, um, there are a ton of patterns out there. If one of you finds one and you need help with it, you let me know and we will work on it. But I, I don't use those, so it's hard for me to figure out like what you need specifically. Like, are you needing it for like a to-go cup or um, a pint of ice cream or like your coffee cup at home? So I needed more info for that since it's not something I use. Ah, right. You dr <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, okay, so the other thing I want to mention was I uh, Soda Fit was streaming yesterday, and so I joined her stream, and it was really fun. It was really neat to see that she has this really great thriving community of people who tune in and watch her sew, and she's an expert in fit, um, and she really caters her style or her, her knowledge to fit. And um, she even like like supports her Patreon subscribers or patrons with fit, like personalized fitting. So I thought that was really, really cool. And it was really fun to see another live streamer that's live sewing, so. Oh, can you use, a, you should look in your book. My serger, I cannot use anything but these weird EL705 needles. Oh, I'm so sorry. You've used sewing needles. There you go. So you might try it and just just use your hand wheel and crank your stitches a few and see what happens and listen for your needle hitting anything. But from my experience, mine, I can't swap them out. But it looks like Dar, she can or he can. So you might try it. Yeah. You don't really want to mess around with it. There's so many moving parts in your serger. It is the one thing you got to kind of go respect that you know my surgery's right there that's why i'm <laughs> doing that okay so let's get to sewing these so we're going to maybe be making a little elm t-shirt today it's a little overexposed i have a copy of the pattern here by poppy and jazz patterns you can see there's a long sleeve and a short sleeve version and you can make it a snap shoulder oh there you go yeah Malin. perfect and the fabric I'm using for this is this bamboo and rayon and spandex, and it is freaking yummy. Super boingy. Tomato red, it's, it's a little, it's not, it's more watermelon red in person. Yeah, right, Megan? We're just gonna use the, ba do the basic neck. So I'm gonna serge this together pretty much completely and then hem it. Um, and so we're going to pop over to the serger for that. So here's my neck band, my sleeves. I'm gonna take it all, all off of the pattern pieces right now. So if you're sewing a adult t-shirt, these steps are exactly the same. Right, Megan? <laughs> Hi, Vicki, how's it going? So, um, I don't know if I'll even put my label in this because even if they put this on a little kid, my label would be kind of scratchy and huge. My label's the size of a six month old's hand, you know? So you can tell the front from the back because the um, front neck is more scooped. It's, it's very obvious to me. And then this fabric does have a right and a wrong side. So we're gonna start with the shoulders. We're gonna do shoulders, sleeves, underarm seams, and neck band, and then we're gonna search the um, sleeve edges and the body, and we're gonna hem it on the single needle, doing it the way I did on my jammy top where I stretched it. So, you guys ready? <laughs> and then we're gonna get to the willow pinafore and that cute meerkat fabric. So, all right, where, here we go. So I'm just sitting here, sewing on my serger. I got my shoulders lined up already. Let's see how this looks. You can still kind of see me, huh? I thought you could see me better. All right. I switched my serger to a four thread for all these seams. Um, so it'll give me kind of a more secure seam along the edge and the overcasting, the over edge stitch. 
I might remove it when I do the cut hem edge before the hemming. So, all right, here we go. Oh wait, I wanted to double check the seam allowance. You, you would think after how long of streaming, I would just figure this out three eighths of an inch before I started every single time. I doubt it. All right, let's do it. This is gonna go together pretty quick. <laughs> Dang, I had no trouble with this when I was doing my test. It even pushed my edge away from the neckline. It's kind of a bummer. I made my stitch width pretty narrow. It was almost twice that wide before, and I made it narrower because um, of the narrower seam allowance. And I feel like with kids' clothing, it is kind of nice to make it a little more delicate. A bigger, a bigger seam is going to be more felt by the a littler being, you know? All right, so I don't think there's a front and back with this sleeve, but there is a right side of this fabric. So I'm gonna push my shoulder seam to the back. There's a cap notch, which is nice. I don't use pins just because um, it's so dangerous next to your serger. So when you're doing a sleeve, just, you know, little bits and make sure you don't catch anything underneath. Morning brown sugar. <laughs> Does she always use three eighths? Is it all the sew over it patterns as three eighths? That's so small. I definitely, like I read through the instructions um, for this, Anna, and for the willow, and the willow, I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna warn you guys, I'm gonna sew that pretty differently. I don't know, I don't really understand the way they decided to do it. It's, it's very, it's too much work. <laughs> All right, so see, I'm lining up my notch right there, and then I just kind of stretch to flatten it out, and then I let it relax. get my other corner lined up like this. And I always line up with the edges right here together like that. And then I kind of pull it a little bit, get it all situated, make sure I didn't get any bumps in under the knife there in the presser foot. But I try and keep it relaxed while I'm sewing. to fit how's it going <laughs> welcome I meant to ask you what your um your time difference is because you were kind of like oh wait 11 a.m pacific are you are you a uh, mountain or central you're central aren't you all right let me get rid of all these little tails just because they bug me <laughs> you're central okay cool cool well, welcome. I really enjoyed your stream and your viewers are so nice. It was really awesome. It was so nice to like, it's always so nice to hang out with other sewists, you know, and that's why I started this and you know what I mean. But it was so great to be the person in the sewing stream. All right. So I'm going to do this underarm now, but when I get to this the seam for the sleeve. I'm actually going to push the seam allowances one one way and one the other because of the bulk right there. My serger has been protesting with stuff like that lately. <laughs> Plus,
Plus, little underarms on babies are a little delicate. See that? It got a little hung up there. I was thinking today, I used to love using the serger, and now I don't. <laughs> oh, you know, Hillary, I'm sorry. That's a great, great question. Your allergies seemed fine. I didn't even notice it. Um, that's awesome, Terry. You know about SodaFit. Um, I would just zigzag it. If you're using this on a home sewing machine, you can zigzag your seams together. And when I say that, when people say just to zigzag your seams together, they don't really tell you that it really just needs to be a gentle zigzag, you, you, like a long, you know, spacing between the zig and the zag, if that makes sense. Like it just needs to, like that's blown up, but you know what I mean? It doesn't need to be like this, like a buttonhole. Um, you just need something to where you're either using a stretch stitch on your machine and look in your manual, it probably has one, or you use the zigzag. You will not notice it on the outside of the garment that it is zigging and zagging. It just, it's just kind of magical. The other thing you can do is you don't actually need to finish the edges of knit. It doesn't unravel. It's just something we've all grown to love about the insides of our garments, and it looks more polished when it, the edges are finished. But knits don't need the, the overcast edge like we treat them. So you can, you can also sew your knits together by just stretching and using your single needle machine. A wobble stitch, oh, I love that. I pushed the underarm seams reverse from one from the other, Eliza. Yeah, exactly, Melin. Yeah, 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 exactly. All right, so I just have this little neckband, which I have now lost. Oh, here it is. Oi. Okay. So I'm going to sew the short edges together like this. <laughs> I know this is going to get misaligned because of my, my machine right now. Not bad. Soda Fit has the little basket on the front of her serger. I used to have one of those and dang, I love that thing. All right, so for your um, lining up your neckband, what I like to do, okay, I'm just gonna say it. This is this is super stretchy, really awesome fabric, but this opening to put over a baby, they're not gonna like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you this right now. So, <laughs> your husband, oh, 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 you guys are, you said a lot of things at once. You, yeah, right, you don't need a serger. It doesn't, well, you know, exactly. You're not gonna wear it inside out. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I'm kind of thinking about upgrading, but I just am so stubborn about just getting a new piece of equipment just because it's bugging me. All right, so. You're gonna fold it along the long middle, and it's gonna it's gonna want to like unfold. It's, this knit is so nice; it's so bouncy. I love it. So I like to line up that seam at the shoulder rather than at the center back. I don't I mean I this um, pattern. I remember had you notch the center of the center back and the front but not as a double. But I do know that that's the back because it's higher up. The back is always higher up unless it's a style thing. So all my shoulder seams are also pushing towards the back, so that's an indication. And the way I can figure out like my halfway point is I pick a shoulder, so I'm gonna line my seam up to this shoulder, and then I kind of line up my neckline without stretching it. 
and I find the new midpoint right there. And we'll do a little V-notch so it's really obvious. I'm going to do a really shallow one because the seam allowance is so small. And then now I know I can put the center of my neck band right there. And this way the seam is lined up to a shoulder rather than the back neck. Because you can line it to the back of neck, it's totally fine. Um, I just found that sometimes it'll move and then it looks crooked, you know? So this just eliminates it looking crooked. So, I, do you think I could make a basket? I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do the straight stitch hem today. Yeah, and I find like the instructions for sewing this shirt say the most minimal thing possible. She says something, or he says, um, finish the hem with a twin needle or a zigzag. But that doesn't, that doesn't really explain exactly what the hem needs. And, and I'll talk about that when I get over there. So I'm just gonna surge this little neckline. This is probably the trickiest part of this whole project. Uh, my hem is, or not my hem, my seam is a little bulky right here. So I pushed both of these seam allowances towards the front because the shoulders are already pressed towards the back. And then that way I'm not putting all of my seam allowances pressed towards the back with that bulk. I'm hopefully at least going to get this seam lined up right there on the shoulder. Let's, let's hope. But I'm not going to start right there on the seam. I'm going to start before it. I'm going to get my sewing legs under me first. This neckband will most likely need some stretching as I go. So I kind of want to get my sewing legs under me, get going, get the seam on there. You could use some clover clips. So where's my, oh, did I not mark my center of my neckband? You got to be kidding me. I said that, didn't I, during, when I was cutting it, didn't I? All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and figure it out from here. And when you find your center of your neckband on these folded things, make sure you do both layers so you don't get your neckband cockeyed. No torquing, right? So this little center point goes to the new one on the neck that I just made right there. Ooh, is this really stretching this much? Oh, no, it's not too bad. So I'm gonna stretch it like this, find a halfway point, and then let it back and relax. And I'm gonna help my serger grab this really thick seam right here. All right, I'm there. I'm gonna do it again. I just keep doing this, lining up my little point, pull it, grab it all, make sure it all those raw edges stay nice and lined up. You don't want one of these raw edges to slip below the seam and not get caught. Just make sure when you're doing this pulling, you're not pulling when you're sewing because you can pull one of your needles and break it or change the timing of your machine. Sorry, I can't look at comments right now. <laughs> All right, so now we're on the front half. Same thing, I'm gonna stretch it. You really wanna get your, your neckline evenly distributed so you don't get gathery, puckery part, parts. This fabric is so easy to use. Um, made this really easy. So there's your little neck now. All right. I'm not doing the French or flat felt on knit. I've never seen anyone do that. Okay, so here's my little neck. Looks pretty good. 
I feel like it's a little, you see, you can see those little bit of puckers there. Feels really good though. It looks really nice. Like the serging stitch looks really nice. I'm going to tighten this up and um, I'm going to, I'm going to stitch these down, you know, I'm going to stitch my tail down in the uh, edge of the serging. Oh boy, I'm making that look so awkward. Oh, I forgot I unthreaded my needle by accident earlier. My favorite thing to do is thread the needle on camera. All I've had is like coffee today. I may have breakfast, but I can't tell if my hands are, are shaking because of that because I didn't drink that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, Eliza. I think um sewing on knits, the best thing to do when you're sewing on knits is to sew a few of them so that you get the hang of it before you switch back to wovens. You know? That way you have some success with it too. They're just a different animal. And animals, you know, react differently. Okay. Oh, I needed to do my little hems, but I thought I'd show you my neckline. So um, the instructions have you top stitch the neckline right here. I am a little nervous to do that, but I could. I don't find it necessary. This one's so nice and clean and soft. There, There's... The functional reason for adding the top stitch right here is really just a finish detail, you know? I have food here. I'm not hungry. I feel like I'm just a little excited. <laughs> so let me go back to this camera. We'll surge the edge. Um, and I think I'm gonna try removing one of my threads here as well. Um, I think it is this one here that I want to remove. On mine, I gotta tighten up the screw immediately. I would hate to lose it. I always have this little piece of fabric for some of my needles when I barely use them in my little cubby there. All right. Get a little scrap piece of fabric. and see how this looks, because I might have to adjust the um, tension. a little bit of buckling. Can you see that? Can you see that? A little bit of buckling. I can do one little thing, but I feel like it's going to make it too loose, so let's check it out. Look how different that looks. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna make the width a little narrower and see if um, you see how close together my stitches are this way. 
That's the length. I, I like that. I like it when it's dense like that. What I'm trying to do is get rid of these little loops on the edge. Like that looks really great right there. Let's try one more time. I'm running out of fabric. Let's try it on the cross grain. So now I need to decide. I, I don't like the buckling, so I'm gonna loosen it up. So this is a bamboo um, rayon knit with some, some spandex in it from Hearts Fabric. It is great. I can, I want I want some shirts out of this stuff. What's the red called again? It was, it just says red. This is a six month size, you guys. Six months, it's itty bitty. All right, so um, this is my back. I press all my seams towards the back as I go. And I'm just uh, running this along the cut edge of my sleeve hems and my body. I'm going slow so my machine doesn't vibrate and it doesn't get too loud. I'm gonna put this inside out. It'll just be easier. I love watching the stitches form. Yeah, I don't really like those little loops, but I am going to stitch this down. All right, so this is the back, so I'm pushing the seam towards me. Evening it up. If your blade is dull, make sure your whole cut edge is nice and smooth. That way you don't have to trim. All right, and we'll do our sleeves. So definitely put your um, shirt inside out because look at how tiny this little hole is. It'll just be a lot easier um, to not accidentally cut your end of your garment because you, all of your garment is like away from, from being underneath. Sergers don't have free arms. If you want, you can do this before you set your sleeve on. But it's nice to have a nice smooth um, circle here. And if I had done this first and then put my underarm on, I could have gotten these two. That's kind of messy there, huh? I could have gotten these two edges misaligned from one another like this. You know, so it's nice to have one smooth circumference for the hem if that makes sense. Oh, interesting, Eliza. Like for, um, you mean just like designating your pins and needles for certain uses? I just, just, just realized I could pin my needles on the ruffle you know of the pie slice or the cupcake and then that way I'm not pushing them into the pin cushion and losing them okay now we're ready <laughs> to do our hem is it hard to convert your serger with the free arm? That's pretty cool. I've only seen them in factories. All right, so I'm gonna kinda 
All right, I'm going to leave this little tail first. I'm going to include it in the hem, I think. I do kind of want to cinch it up better. I'm terrible at dealing with these. All right. I slept in my new jammies for the first time last night, and when I got up in the morning, a button fell off in the bathroom, like fell off of me. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I hand sewed these on yesterday and I used eight strands of thread. And then I realized I didn't lose any of my buttons. It was probably like it had fallen in the pocket of the jammies. <laughs> it was so funny. I was like, I'm just dropping buttons here. <laughs> oh yeah, right Eliza. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, you can even um, do things like, you know, put a little like a uh, pin or toothpick in there with a little flag, you know, that has it. Um, I used to have something right here on my machine, but I also try and get away from magnets and that kind of led me down the magnet path, so. All right, so now I'm going to do my hems. I'm gonna do it right side out. So this is where the instructions say to either zigzag or twin needle the hem. Well, the thing is, um, I don't think all twin needles on your home machine work for sewing knit, knits. I never said what the llama print was, Megan. What llama print? You mean my bag in that picture? That's an old chicken boots bag. It's not that old, it was from like last year. But um, that's the, project, the pocket bucket in llama. That's the last one sitting over there. Um, it might be a second, but I doubt it. Yeah, it's just a, that's one of the chicken boots things. It's just a sample because I'm making it into one of the patterns and I was just trying to fill up that shelf. <laughs> Those are the project bags. The project, the ones to the right of it are the ones coming, the thing I'm working on now. So it's a really cute llama print. I'm pretty sure it's, um, it's so cute, right? Yeah. I feel like it's cotton and steel when cotton and steel was cotton and steel. So they say to use a twin needle, but I'm pretty sure all twin needles on home machines, and I could be wrong about this, aren't geared towards sew sewing knits. In my experience, twin needles are for decorative double needle top stitching, but I do know that you can use them for twin needling a hem in, in that you're mimicking a cover stitch. Now the thing is, the difference between a cover stitch and a home machine is a home machine has a bobbin, which is a lock stitch. Because once you have one thread underneath and one thread on the top, you're basically making loops that are looping together, right? Because the, like, the looper is coming across and grabbing your thread as it goes underneath, choop, and then it locks it, right? Whereas with a serger, it's a continuous stitch. There's no bobbin. Yeah, that's what I thought, Malin. So there is that option, but I would test it out and make sure it actually stretches because you wouldn't want the, the sleeve or the hem to pop because then you'd have little um, stitches undone. So just make sure. It should tell me in my guide. Tell me what my guide. Oh, my little needle guide. Oh, you mean the manual, yeah. Yeah, and so it just depends. I mean, it depends on, um, it's not really the needle, it's your machine. So if you have a stretch stitch or you have like a fake cover stitch, then you can try that. But just make sure, because especially on sleeves, they're the first to get popped. Or someone taking off their shirt and doing this, you know, or guys do this and, and it will stretch it out and then the stitches will pop. So, so I'm gonna put these little um, tails under. I actually just want to, I just want to secure them down so I don't have to deal with them. So I'm going to stitch them down. I'm not going to just cut them. They're so higgledy piggledy though. Look at them. This one doesn't look very good. It's so tempting to cut that loop off. So hard not to. <laughs> My label would be so helpful in knowing the front from the back, but um, I just really feel like it's just, it's too big. Oh, I lost it. Did I get it? I'm just trying to secure these ends and I'm creating more. <laughs> My thread's a little heavy for this nice little 
Rayvon bamboo fabric tiny shirt. Okay, so now we're gonna do the hem. And so when I do this, I'm just gonna turn it up and I'm gonna stretch as I sew. So I turned it right side out so that I can stitch on the inside of the garment because I don't have a free arm. You might. So let's see, I'm gonna fold it. Let's get rid of these threads here. Oh, perfect, Megan, yeah, that's great. So this is the like old school way to sew knits where you just stretch it. I literally stretch it as I sew it on. And it's gonna make it look bumpy at first, but it's gonna go back. I like this way because I know it stretches, I, I, I trust my machine, and waiting for a stretch stitch is <laughs> so slow. <laughs> and also, I'm just not liking my cover stitch on my machine right now. It's, it's a little untrustworthy. I back stitch right there on the side seam. And so there it is. It's not even that bumpy. But look at that, totally stretchy. It's just the easiest way to do it and it works. No fancy needles or um, machines. Just make sure that if you're using your home machine you put in a ballpoint needle. Yep, Malin, I do. Eliza, doesn't it go back after um, you wash it? Mine on my um, jammies looked wavy, but it calmed down. This makes it so that the stitch length looks really tiny. And on some fabrics, your stitches, when it comes, like I wouldn't stretch the heck out of it, right? You don't want to like overstretch it. Um, but it can make your little loop, your stitches look like a little tiny loop. And that's because basically, you know, when it's stretched out, it's not loopy like that at all. That's why. All right, so we'll do the, the sleeve. I'm gonna try and tuck that little loop <laughs> into the hem. The sleeve looks a little messy. Sorry, widow sweeve. I'm gonna turn it all under like this. And you could do this on uh, adults as well. I just did it on my jammy top. It could be, you know, also you wanna make sure that you have a machine that does a nice bobbin stitch too because it is your bobbin that's showing you can do it from the right side if you like though that's how you would do a cover stitch my machine sounds different when i'm doing this yeah so see eliza like it does kind of it's not as obvious this is such a small amount it's really hard to see it but you can kind of see that it, it makes it look like a little cuff. I use a, I'm using a straight stitch. Yeah, it could be Eliza. The cotton knits are a little less forgiving. And when I did that jammy shirt, you could see mine rippling like this. I'm sure it's gonna calm down though, especially cause it is cotton. Yeah, so this is, I'm just using my regular industrial machine for this. If you have a stretch stitch or you um, want, to, you can zigzag your hem. That's a completely safe way to do this. And I, I know that like a lot of us don't want our clothes to look home sewn, but there, there's a lot to be said for being proud of it being home sewn as well, you know? And that a zigzag stitch, there are companies that finish things with a zigzag because it's decorative. It's kind of cool looking too. Use a contrast thread color, or if you can, maybe, you know, a heavier weight thread or a nicer, prettier weight and just like make it a feature, you know? All right, so I'm gonna turn this under. I'm turning it under with where the little like hem, um, like it wants to turn right there. See where my machine's kind of getting bound up right there? 
my serger. So I'm just pulling it. Try and keep a nice straight line. I don't think I was very straight when I got to where it started. Oh, not bad. Okay, great. All right, we're done. So the one of the steps is to top stitch the neckline. I don't know why I'm so nervous to do that. I could do it. It's not necessary. That's partly why I don't want to. Um, because I really love when things can just look really soft and natural like this. You know? Look how cute this little guy is. But I'm going to tell you what. If you're a mom and it's for your own kid, um, well, it can. That's what I was saying, Eliza. You can. You sometimes will see that. Maybe shorten your stitch length a tiny bit so that the loops aren't as noticeable and don't stretch your fabric as much. Yeah, so I would make the stitch length a little shorter. My stitch length right now is my normal stitch length. But because it's on the knit, it's kind of, it's almost like it's sewing a little bit through syrup. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, kind of, I don't know. It's not dragging, but it is definitely, it's not getting as the purchase it gets on like a woven. And so I getting, I'm getting a shorter stitch length. And so my loop's less noticeable, but I didn't change my stitch length. I just used my regular one, but, um, well, I don't know what I was saying, but, um, oh, if you're, if, you, if this is going on your kid, I would take the time to put in the shoulder snaps. Oh, I did not get that lined up. See, that's what I'm talking about. My machine's pushing things. I don't like that. Um, and I say that because if you're giving this to someone else, they're, they're probably not going to want to pull this over their kid's head after the first two times, they won't be using your gift. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you guys straight up. I started in the children's wear industry and I've been a mom. So um, anything that makes it easier to put on your kid is better because their heads when they're born are almost their size. They don't grow as much, right? So their heads are pretty big. So to make it so that you don't have to like pop this over their head and it's hard, they'll make the necklines bigger and then it sits down here like a necklace, right? And then we're like, oh, my baby's cold because the neck's so big. That's the, the drawback. So this will go on, especially in this knit. This knit is so, I mean, look at that. You know, it's really nice. But if you <laughs> want to be able to use it, take the time to put in the snaps. It's not hard. It seems a little bit hard, but look at one in your closet because if you're already a mom and you have these little snap tees, you can, you can use snap tape that's already made and you basically are turning this back, put on, on, putting on your snap tape on your neck um, and then um, and you, and you, you put on your neck band to your, your bodice. So you do one shoulder. You don't have one shoulder sewn. It's open. It's usually this one that's open. And then you sew on your neck band. You have to finish the edge of the, oh, you, do you have to finish the neck? I'm not sure how she does it. And then you put your snap tape on each side and then you continue on with your sleeves and your, it just goes right around the armhole. So that's how you do it. She might even have your sleeves on and not your underarm. That was probably the most confusing thing I could have told you guys, but oh man, so cute. Okay, let's get to our next one. So that was the Poppy and Jazz Elm t-shirt. Put that over there until I'm about to move it in a second. And now we're gonna do the Willow Planet 4 in a size 18 to 24 months. And this has a button straps, kind of like an overall, and then a full back button that I really wish I would have thought through before we cut it out because that's probably one modification I would do. If you haven't cut yours out, you see how this has, here we go, here's a great, all right, so, boy, that's so bright. I just can't, I, 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 this is natural light too. 
Is that okay? So it's got a gathered waist and it has the overall straps with button and buttonhole, two pockets, and then the full back is a button opening. Now, you guys, you don't need a back opening on this because the, the straps come off and this waist opening is big enough to get over a kid's head. So if you haven't cut this out yet, this is what I would say. I would take your back and if there's a center notch on it, I don't have the pattern handy. They gave me a tracing and I don't, and the pattern's folded up in an envelope over there. If they don't have a center mark at the top right here and here, then just fold it along the buttonhole because that's the center and put the back on the fold, cut two, cut an outer and a, and a lining, all right? And then do the same thing for the skirt. Leave off the facing, and then I'll tell you how to sew it later on. It'll be a lot easier and only two buttons and buttonholes, okay? Because <laughs> that's just too much. So, all right, so we're going to, um, let's see. What's the first? I'm gonna try and sew this the way they do it for the most part, except for the end. And I, I, uh, because I, I know a faster way. You guys still there? Oh, I'm sorry if I haven't checked Twitch. Sorry, I, I'm having to check two chat windows lately. Hey, Brooke. <laughs> I know it's tiny, isn't it? <laughs> do you remember when Joaquin was that little? <laughs> You do snaps on the front, Megan, of the little pinafore. I mean, you you could, but you have the ones on the straps. But that's the other. The, you're making a good point. Like putting the buttons and buttonholes on the back, you'd have to flip the kid over. And 18 to 24 months, that that kid's crawling away from you at that point. You know. So I'm just trying to be helpful here. All right. So let's see. Um, let's see what the Right sides together, line the front and back, and then the lining. And we're gonna add interfacing, and then we're gonna do the pocket. All right, we'll stick to the instructions for now. All right, so I've got my front. We're gonna line it with this peppered cotton. So the fabric that we're using, um, supplied by Hearts, it's this really cute meerkat print. Right, Frederica? I know. Some of them are just, especially in kids' clothes. Snaps would be great, right? This is the, it's a Japanese import by Koka, and it's item number 99000 on the Hearts Fabric uh, website. And we do have a discount code, so so 10 for 10% off. And then there's this lining that's peppered cotton. So ooh, you can really see... Remember how I was showing you how the warp and the weft are two different colors, like it's a red and a green? So um, that's what gives it this really great texture. This stuff's really cool. I really like it. Front snaps versus buttons, back is one. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, babies are all over the map with sizing. I like this color combo too. The peppered cotton we're using, the color is called begonia. I think that's such a perfect name for that color. A begonia leaf, and it's 98470. The canvas is 8020 cotton and linen. All right, so we're gonna do, this is the backs. We're gonna do our side seams first. I'm pretty sure, I wanted to double check that they said I'm allowed to do sewing mods. Yes! I love it when they're like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh, let's change our thread color. But I'm all ready. And I need to change my thread on my serger too. All right. So are you guys sewing today? What are you guys up to? Anyone go anywhere for um, Thanksgiving week? I know some Americans are here that celebrate it. I know, isn't it cute, Malin? That, oh yeah, avocado. But you know, I feel like with the red, it does remind me of begonias, you know? 
Or, you know, not begonia, geraniums. It's geranium, right? Wait. Oh, it's begonia leaf. That's so funny because I instantly was picturing geraniums because of the red and the green, you know? Hey, <laughs> Brooke. Yeah, it's so hard to remember when our kids are that small. There was something recently. Oh, yeah. I found a box. Like, I, I thought I'd unpacked everything. So I found this box, and it had this uh, dress of crickets that she wore, and I pretended to lose at one point because I was like, no more wearing this dress, you know, one of those. It was just disgusting. And I found it and I, it made me teary eyed and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm getting sentimental. But she just turned 17. So, you know, it just feels so recent. It's so weird. Football and golf. I'm sorry, Eliza. <laughs> House party of 75 and two babies. Oh my, that's a lot of people. Oh, your eldest son turned 18 today. Congratulations, Malin. Happy birthday to you. That's so nice. You're knitting on the Great British Baking Shawl. Wait a minute. They have a shawl knit along on the Great British Baking Show. That's, that's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. So I got my, well, I can't even, I did some, yeah. I dropped something off at a quilter too. My cat quilt. Let me try and recover that statement there. <laughs> All right, so I'm doing my side seams. It's three eighths of an inch, right? <laughs> I'm gonna use this teal thread um, on both these fabrics because that's what they supplied. I think it'll be fine. All right, so we have our lining and we have our outer bodice here and then they have you iron some um, interfacing on this front upper bodice piece right here I just put a strip all the way across and then I'm gonna iron that when we go, get to ironing that right there and that piece is right here and now we're going to we're doing the pocket now this is such a weird order this is such a weird order because I would think you would Continue on with the bodice. All right, so the little pocket has some notches at the top here and you are creating a little pleat. I'm gonna not hide the fact that there's no dot marking on this. And I was too lazy this morning to go look at the pattern to see where it is. So I'm eyeballing it. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Federica. He's your career. That's awesome. Oh, he's a, he's your caregiver, maybe? Is that what you meant to say? That's so nice. I did, Eliza. I know. The kitty quilt. I, I don't know if it's still there. Um, Wouldn't I want to overlock that edge? And so you're going to turn it under. Top stitch it. Cute little... Inverted pleat. Look at that. My meerkats are always upside down on both pockets. <laughs> Let's change the thread on the serger. I think we're going to need it in a second anyway. <laughs> I don't know if it's still on my Instagram story. I shared um, Sew to Fit because I was watching her yesterday. Yeah, make sure you check out her stream, you guys. This is really fun. I'm definitely gonna tune in whenever I can. There was a gal from Sweden in there and uh, where was the other spot I saw? All right. Oh darn. Well, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna leave this three thread I was just thinking, shoot, I should have left it fourth thread, but I don't want to seam with my serger on the wovens. 
I really like just using your serger on wovens as a seam finish. You could, um, you could French seam this though on the, all you really need to do is French seam the skirt side seams and you don't need your serger at all. Cause you could turn under this pocket edge without serging it. That would be completely fine. Sometimes you just don't want to set up your serger, even if you have one, you know? That's so cool. I think it's just a little style detail. Think I could, uh, think I could uh, serge this without ironing it? <laughs> I'm going to chain them together. Well, that's, I, I really don't like that when that happens. I'm going to make it a little tighter for next time. Uh, I think I need to do my skirt side seams, but I'm going to put my pockets on first. And baked bread with you too. That's pretty cool. My husband got this really great bread baking system a few years ago and it's like a, a miniature like cast iron oven that he puts in our oven. It's awesome. I did, you, you missed it, Rook. Oh, that's right, begonia leaves do have red on the underleaf. That's so smart. Yeah, it looks only. So then you fold it and top stitch it down. I did test my, yeah, I did test it. Okay. And make sure you're a, a hem a little bit crooked. Just like that. It's just a cute little detail. That's all. Ooh, butter chicken with non bread. I love butter chicken. My husband and daughter really like uh, chicken tikka masala though. I like that, but I like butter chicken, butter chicken better. And it's easier to find the other one. You know? Okay, so now we're gonna put on the pockets. And when I have these little curved edges like this, I like to help myself out by putting a stitch along that edge just um, to the right of the seam line. That way I have like a little spot to kind of Go, go for when I'm turning it under. So just make sure you sew this little guide as parallel to the edge as possible because curves have a funny way of being difficult to turn under. It's like um, when I would bring pieces of paper to my students when they were learning how to sew. I would first just give them these papers with like different size squares on the papers and then there was one with a spiral and then one with circles and one with triangles like basic shapes right but um oh hi Glenn how's it going um I you know and they would wouldn't even thread the machine I would just say I just want you to sew with your machine um on these shapes just to kind of get an idea they always wanted to start with the circle. They thought that was the easiest one. And I'm like, well, the square's the easiest. And they just couldn't imagine it until they tried it. It was really funny to see their reaction. And then they, they were like, oh, now I know the spiral's probably the hardest. <laughs> it was really funny. Okay, so I have this little edge here. And I also, what the heck? I also like to pull it a little bit. I should have probably made the stitch length a little longer. It'll be a little easier because this, this is like a linen cotton canvas. I'm just going to pull it a little bit. I'm not really drawing it up um, to get gathers, but more just like to kind of make that edge naturally now want to turn like that. So I'm going to just pull a little bit on the curves. It makes sewing the curve down so much easier. 
I love Indian food. That's the one thing I get every time we travel. Like my family, it's like, that's our thing. Like we always look for good Indian food. And when I'm with Brooke, we always get really good Thai food. <laughs> I love butter chicken. It's not buttery either. Sounds like it, but it's not. Yeah, I'm really excited about that cat quilt, Brooke. In fact, I had it hanging the top here and I'm really missing it. Now I want like a quilt for the wall, but it's going to be a while, you guys, before I start sewing another paper pieced quilt top. I I did not like removing all that paper. Your crew's <laughs> like, no, <laughs> that's funny. Do they just have a problem with um, that it's goat? I've always wanted to try goat meat. I've tried, I like lamb a lot, but I, 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 there's nothing I could probably say to make you understand how like bad I think goat cheese tastes. There's something about it, like I, it's beyond like not liking a food for me, it's ridiculous. It's embarrassing how much I don't like it. Like it's, a, it's like a reaction, <laughs> how much. So I wondered if the meat would be the same way because I like sheep and I feel like it tastes like sheep or lamb. I'm actually eating mostly vegan lately, except my coffee. I don't know why, I'm just enjoying it, it tastes good. Okay, um, I'm gonna pop over to the iron. I'm just iron a few things while we're here. I saw that um, podcast, Black Women Stitch, uh, or no, it's Stitch Please, is um, giving away, uh, they're having a giveaway for one of those Aliso irons that we've been talking about. So if you guys like entering giveaways, you might check out the her podcast. Okay, so now I have this little curved edge. And I'm just trying to, I'm just going to iron it under like this. And then I'll have a nice little curve. The other thing you can do is cut two of these pocket facings, pockets and, and um, sew around the perimeter and turn turn it. But when you have this little dart, it could make it a little thick and awkward. But curved pockets are always the weirdest to get perfectly symmetrical on your garment. I can't even see that. <laughs> Typically I don't, I bet some of you are like, wow, she's actually ironing the edge of her pocket. <laughs> I know, I'm so bad. But I love sewing these little curved pockets and kind of babying them, you know, it's kind of fun. I feel like it's already perfectly a little nice curved pocket. It's fun. I don't like Greek yogurt either. Is it a lot, is goat a lot like lamb? Is it similar? I've actually tried to have it. But they ran out. It's funny that we're kind of weirded out. I think it's just an American thing because, uh, you know, we, we eat lamb and we eat beef. And when you have a, a dairy farm, like for cows, you, you know, you don't all, always get female. You have the males, so you eat the males, right? It's the same thing with goats. Can't control what sex is born. All right. Look, it's so cute. Some of them are right side up. At least it's not a one-way print, you know. 
But they, I feel like they're really looking at me, and I feel really bad that some of them are upside down. <laughs> Look at this guy's, <laughs> he's like poking his head up. All right, let's just do the uh, side seams here. It's stronger. It tastes like, wait. Oh, goji tastes like, oh, no way. Yeah, no worries, soda fit. Yeah. We were talking all about you. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Look at me, I'm even pressing my seams open. Wow. All right, I'm gonna put this um, little interfacing piece right here and I'm gonna do it from this side. I do really like the wool ironing pad when you're doing interfacing because if it sticks to it, it's no big deal. Like I feel like when it sticks to my cotton pad, it leaves residue, but it doesn't on here. Nice. Okay, this fabric got really wrinkled in my laundry and I, I'm not sure why that is. It could have literally just been how it was washed in my laundry. Your hand was itching. <laughs> All right. So let's put our little pockets on the skirt now. You know what I love about doing kids clothes? All of the pieces fit in a nice organized pile right here next to my ironing pad. All right, so I have my pins. They're in the um, holes uh, where this these pockets get placed. Why does it look all yellow now? What the heck? What happened? What'd you guys do? Hmm. That's a little better. What does that look like to you guys? Does that look okay? Okay, so I'm gonna start um, with my little pockets here and we'll just stick them, line them up just above that. It's a habit for me. Yeah, it's better, isn't it? Right? That was weird. I it usually doesn't do that. There's been, we went through a phase. You remember that guys where everything was like, um, was it pinkish? And it just kept coming back every time I fixed it. All right, so I'm gonna lay this on here and I'm gonna kind of look at it and see, make it symmetrical. When you have these little, like between it being a curve and having the little pleat, it is a little bit to make sure you get on there straight. Now when it's sewn on the dress with all the gathers, it's, you know what, don't, don't beat yourself up about it too much. It's really gonna look fine on there, you know? And you know, when that kid is crawling around on the ground, you're, you know, <laughs> it's gonna get use, so. All right, so all these little threads from my gathering stitch there, I'm gonna manage those in a second. I'm just kind of getting my pocket into place. I don't usually pin my pockets on, but this one definitely. It'll just be easier. Between the linen cotton canvas being a little bit boardier and fighting me a little bit more, you know? And you're spreading out this little edge here because of that pleat, right? But I also wanna make sure I'm keep, keeping it nice and straight up here. I'm gonna get rid of some of these threads here. And I always start upside down.
You can't even see my needle today. That's better, huh? <laughs> All right, so what I like to do on my pockets, now this is the little kid's pocket. They're probably never even going to use these, but you know, there are those kids that like to put their hands in their pockets and kind of lean on them, push, you know? And um, on a normal patch pocket like this, um, whether it be on the chest or pants or whatever, I like to start at the bottom of the hem and then come up to the top. I'm exaggerating my angle into the pocket, go across out to the corner and then down. So I'm making a little corner. This is just a reinforcement so that the greatest place of stress um, has a better chance on not pulling the pocket away from the shirt. I mean, if they do it really, really um, firmly, you, you might just rip it off of the garment, you know? That's just the hazards of pockets sometimes. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna start down there at that bottom. And then I'm gonna hand wheel it to the top edge because my stitch length was a little too long for that spot. And then I go across and then down. And this is gonna be probably really easy sewing because I've already, I put that little stitch in there, and then I ironed it. No problem, right? Let's get rid of these threads here. Get rid of our pins. Just like that. That's nice. I know, right? Yeah, this is definitely for walkers. You're right. I don't know, uh, like, how many kids' patterns this company has drafted. Like, if this is kind of their new thing. Because there's definitely a few things, like, they're, they're really cute. Like, the styles are really cute. And I like that they're really versatile basics and things. But the, I do feel like some of it is, um, there's a, a little bit better way to sew some of these things. Um, they're not wrong the way they have you sew it, but there are some easier ways. And also just knowing, like, I feel like with kids' clothes, <laughs> there's that how we want our kid to look or you know, your grandchild to look, right? How you want to dress them up and make them look a certain way. How your kid actually, their, what their personality is um, and what kind of clothes they actually want to wear. By two years old, my daughter had stopped wearing anything I wanted her to wear. She, she, she you know, she had her own viewpoint. <laughs> it was really strong. Um, but there's also the functionality of kids' clothes that you, you you just can't get around. There's just certain things like you can kind of be like, okay, this will be fine for special occasion and for, you know, to wear to a birthday party or whatever. But for everyday stuff, there's just certain things that just kind of drive you crazy as a parent or as a child and they don't want to wear it, right? So you just got to respect those things. And buttons up the back of a garment is high on the list for that. And so far, both like two of the three things we've made have buttons up the back. It's cute, but it's not ideal. So it makes it less for everyday wear, in my opinion, and more for special occasion. Because it's just not something, like you can give it to your friend, but they're gonna be like, oh, I love that, but it's such a pain, you know? And in the morning, they don't want a pain. They already have a pain. And it's wriggling around on the ground in front of them while they put a diaper on it, you know? <laughs> I mean, I love babies. <laughs> All right, so we have our little pockets. Pretty cute. I have a little point right here. Do I have a little point right there? Kind of. You could sew this the um, other way and then stitch down your pleat as well. That would be kind of cute. But this is the smoother way to get on the pocket in. All right, so now we have our side seams for our skirt and I'm going to single needle them on the industrial and then I'm going to sew the um, seams down with the serger just to finish the edges 
Yeah, right? It's been around two years. Yeah, they're really cute, and I can see why they'd be a, the answer, like a fun project to do. Where the company I first worked at with Children's was um, Bum Equipment. So if you've been around a while and you heard of Bum Equipment, um, you've probably heard of them. And we did really like, like, knits. We were all knits. My video is getting pixelated. That might be your internet. I'm not sure though. Is it better, Megan? Maybe try refreshing. Are you watching Netflix at the same time? Are you cheating on me? <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> so I'm just putting in my seam here. But that boss I had, um, he was pretty, he was from like old school garment industry. He'd been around and he did really trendy stuff. If you sew the two back skirts together, you can still leave the hole open back out, doesn't it? Well, um, this has a center back opening because it has a button thing. Is that what you mean? You need to see if I told you. <laughs> um, is that what you mean, Hallery? Like, it's still... I mean, I could sew this, if you're saying I could sew this together, I could and get rid of all the buttons and buttonholes. So tempted. Hearts just like seeing me do buttons and buttonholes, I think. All right, I'm gonna use the serger. This is all I need the serger for right now, right? I think so. I barely need it. So you could have done French seams right here. That'd be really nice. On the last dress we did, we did do French seams. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you could. Um, I, you're tempting me right now. This is really exaggerates what the stitch looks like. See this, this actually, oh no, that's okay. I have it down to three threads. Usually I do four. All right. Um, if you don't have like, when you have these like fabrics that are this colorful, um, and you don't have a thread color to match and you don't want to buy four cones for your serger, just try matching whatever the lining fabric is, unless you're using it for the seam and you think that it'll pull apart and you might see the threads through there, then you might need to finish it with a single needle stitch, like a straight stitch. But um, try matching this or using like a grays. I like having a few grays on hand because they kind of are chameleons, you know, they kind of kind of adapt to the color. I know, right? Exactly. Exactly. I know. It's very tempting to just sew up the back seam and then we could do button up bodice in the back and then um, it just be a continuous waist seam. The thing is there's no point to those buttons in the back bodice then. They would be just, they'd just be for show, you know? I'm definitely feeling rebellious. Because look at this opening. So say this is... Um, this is a big enough opening to get over the head of the child with their arms. We're talking a pretty small child, you know? So we'll just do it as is. Just in case someone wants this video as a how-to because they really want that look. My daughter's calling me. 
Let me see if Brooke's talking up a storm over there. <laughs> I did have my granola apple and yogurt. I think I was just kind of excited. <laughs> All right. I have my uh, monitor on a swivel and it was like canted that way a little bit. All right, so let's see. I think next um, I'm going to, I'm gonna sew, finish sewing up the bodice. We might be getting off the rails now. Like I might do this just my way. Um, we're gonna finish sewing up the bodice and then we're gonna attach the skirt and I'm gonna clean finish the bodice as well with the waistline. And there's a couple ways we could do that. And I think I've decided that I don't need, remember I cut double for the lining on the straps. I don't think I need these. I think it's gonna be plenty thick for our little straps. We did fussy cut our meerkats to be somewhat right side up, didn't we? <laughs> oh, you think these are three eighths of an inch as well? Didn't I just check? The oh God, I didn't do it right. I feel like there is a right side to this fabric and it is, I have it accurate right now. All right, so we're gonna sew all around this long perimeter edge. When you have these curves, try and be really symmetrical with your curve, otherwise it'll look lopsided. I get really slow, but I try not to stop. I'll get a nicer curve if I cannot stop. Yeah, exactly. All right, so Sew to Fit uses that, remember that tube um, style loop turner that I've been trying to figure out? She uses it and she uses it with ease. I can't figure it out. So I use my loop turner and I just poked it way too far. I just want the little hook, there we go. See, that's uh, not ideal. And then I pull it through like this. I use a chopstick to smooth out all my edges. Probably gonna have to do a little bit of damage control on that tip that I just poked through. Let's see if I can get it to poke through on the canvas side this time. Did it? Yeah, like I've tried a few times and um, people love them. And you know, cause this thing isn't always ideal, you know? Because I feel like it can damage the ends, some of some fabrics. I've used one of these for like almost 30 years, so I'm pretty good at it. And I remember it taking some getting used to at the beginning. And it lasts a while. Like that little hook is really strong. Ah, you need jammy. Yeah, do you guys have any, some pajama suggestions for kids? Oh man, I should have trimmed that, you guys. I didn't trim it because uh, I wanted the seam allowance to fill it up inside there, but now I'm feeling like it's gonna be a little bit not smooth. Look at that. That's not that great. Let's see if I can get it in there. The point turners, yeah, those were great. I just use a chopstick. But I should have trimmed the seam allowance and, and even like clipped it a little bit. That way the excess fabric can overlap on itself. It would look a lot nicer. I'm kind of tempted to turn it right side out again or inside out again. 
but I might be able to iron it the way I want it and then top stitch it down, especially this little point right here. You can see, look at that. They have hands for the entire family PJs. Who does, Megan? That'll be fun. You're making like 3T and 4T jammies. Are you doing that for your stream? I'm gonna try and grab the seam allowance. That'll be fun. <laughs> ah, you know, you know, soda fit brown sugar. That's awesome. Night movies, PJ for all the family, even the dogs, and it's free. You found it on Amazon by the big four. There you go. I'll try and grab the seam allowance right now. Oh, you do. So, you know, that's funny because I was just telling my chat the other day that our our um, our family tradition for like the like, you know, like some folks open all their Christmas gifts um, on Christmas Eve. Um, we open one gift. Someone was saying they open their stockings on Christmas Eve. I was pretty jealous of that because I love stockings. Um, we open one gift and it's always jammies because my mom always wanted us to look nice for pictures, you know. <laughs> on Christmas Day and not wear like our ratty old jammies that we've been wearing for years. So um yeah, that's our that's our tradition. And they're always wrapped in white tissue so you know what it is. So you know on Christmas Eve it kind of takes the stress out of it for a kid too. They know they're not getting a big old gift or whatever, you know, on Christmas Eve. They know it's gonna be jammies. We did, it, there was no arguing it. There's just no way we could, there, my mom wasn't budging on that. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I went to her stream yesterday, Brown Sugar. It was really fun. She has such a great community. I can't, you do FaceTime fitting things for your Patreon patrons. That stuck with me. And your is your name Andrea or Andrea? The first one or the second one? Anytime I see that name, I'm always scared to say it. And I know I have a name like Sarami, so it always puts the fear in people. You're gonna do wait, you're you're so on you live stream on Christmas. That's so cool. Or meaning this is your fifth year. Fifth year, dang, you are a legend. That's so cool. Movie night pajamas from So A Little Seam. They have a code in their Facebook group so you get them free. Andrea, thank you, that's perfect. I love that you do that. I always tell people it's like Jeremy with an S. Invariably, some of them start calling me Jeremy by accident because they're trying to remember so hard. <laughs> it's kind of cute. All right, let's try this again. I have that loop thingy, but I'm scared of it. You do before, oh, okay. I'm taking that week off. Why am I trying to do this with my fingertips? When my family's all home, it's so hard to be like, it's distracting. I always think, oh my God, I'll be home for a whole week. What am I gonna do all week? I get a little like nervous. And then the week goes by quick and I'm like, wow, I was kind of settling into that <laughs> really nicely. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like she started on Periscope. So she has like a long history of doing the live thing on Periscope. I thought Periscope was really cool. I never got into it, but I thought it was really cool. At the time I had my factory, so. Being in the home sewing world is really new for me. I've been everywhere else but here. <laughs> I'm not on Facebook. We have a Facebook group and um, that's all I have on Facebook, but I'm personally, I don't have anything on Facebook. So it does limit my spaces. And I just need to do that myself. 
All right, so I need to iron these. All right, thanks for putting up with me fixing those. <laughs> Just gonna kind of make sure I can get these as smooth as possible. So I just turned, returned it, trimmed the seam allowance, and then clipped into that curve so that all those little ruffled edges can overlap on one another. And then I'm addicted to my awl. I use it for everything. All right, so let's see. What else can I do before I have to iron these? Anything else? No. Yeah, I was going to ask that too. Do you have like a, a set schedule, Andrea? Please share your channel in the chat if you like. Give her a follow, you guys. I keep wanting to move this out, out of the way, way, but I need it. <laughs> I well I do other things like I'm trying I, I need the schedule it makes me feel more um, productive you know and then it I keep accountable and I think um, it helps people to tune in you have a bigger audience and you have I think more viewers as well so maybe like when you're you're um, whenever you go live they're just gonna jump on there so maybe someday I'll get there. I've done a couple spontaneous ones. It was kind of fun because people were like, hey. If you are sewing these and you're like, I cannot get these little curved things. Because even me, I'm having a little trouble getting these really nice. Um, you know what? You can just cut them straight across. That's your backup plan. If they're really driving, you're pulling your hair out, it's midnight and you can't call anyone and you wanna cry because you're trying to get that curve nice, just cut them again and cut them straight. <laughs> you know, they don't have to be round. <laughs> Thursday or Saturday. Yeah, it sounds like you're really busy offline as well. And I don't really have that yet. I am turning all the patterns from my former business into print sewing pattern so that's what I do and then also like doing all the thumbnails and I prep everything but that's all I'm doing off camera and I forced myself to take Mondays off because I work Saturdays now that's been really great but it's hard to come into the week on a Tuesday I already feel a little behind I'm trying to get used to that because I need those two days because I, I do so much at home you know what I mean yeah and so you're also teaching me about the um you're getting the pie <laughs> Um, you're also teaching me that you can follow. So what does that mean? You can follow someone on Patreon. You don't have to like give them money, but you can follow them. And so then you'll just see that, oh, it looks like they posted again. Right? Is that how it works? And then you can also say, oh, maybe I do want to be a subscriber now that they're posting something. Because I saw you talking about that and I was kind of curious about what that means. All right, so I have my little strap. I feel like the illustration in here is really great for this, for your strap placement. There is a slight gentle angle right here. And this angle is really important so that the straps don't like go the wrong way. You know what I mean? You, you really need them to kind of come around over the shoulder because you have that shoulder slope, right? And then they point the right way. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know just I had one follower and I was like, well, that's interesting. What does that mean? <laughs> I didn't even know what that was. And I uh, I support another Patreon subscriber. So I'm not following her. I'm supporting her. And so I don't know the difference. I just need to follow. I followed you yesterday and I'm going to start following a few people just to see what that's like. All right. So, so here's this strap. See, by now they've already like gathered up the skirt. I'm going to do that right before I attach it. Oh, and see, they put the, the straps on later. I could do that because they will be kind of in the way. It's this whole thing, this whole thing with this button, button facing, 
This button facing goes the entire length of this whole back dress, but it's only exposed on the lower portion of the skirt. So I, I don't really understand, like, I'm gonna cut down the facing. But see, I would like my um, bodice right now to be finished all around the edges. So I'm gonna do this now. All right, but I wanna look at this. I like her, the diagram. I don't have to sit there and figure it out. But I'll show you a logical way. Say you don't have this with you. Or you wanna go rogue. So you see right here, the strap. So the little angle is pointing towards the center back right here. And so the, the strap is hanging and pointing at the side seam. That's kind of your clue, right? And remember, you want it right sides together. I do have a notch there, but I don't trust it. I'm gonna see if it's actually on here just in case it's a nip in the fabric. Yeah, there's no notch on the, um, oh, that's the front. <laughs> oh, there is a notch, okay, great. I'm just making sure. And let's see, you do line that up to the notch, correct? Yes. That seems so far out that way. All right, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna tack that there for now. And I am going to clean finish this whole upper perimeter right now. And then we're gonna attach this to the skirt because I'm not going to do that facing thing that they did. Because of this linen cotton canvas, I don't really need an, a facing. And if you were to, I don't know why they do that because if there's a facing, a button facing under here inside your bodice, the danger of it crumpling and needing to be ironed after and you can't even get to it and straighten it out is pretty high. So I think you should just leave it off. If you need some extra reinforcement because of the light, if you picked a lightweight fabric, I would just iron some interfacing, the width of that to your center back bodice instead. This vibration is really bugging me. So remember, I've already attached interfacing to the front bodice here. And so now, look, it's a little bit, a little bit smaller. Doesn't matter, I pre-washed it. That always just kind of shrinks it up a little bit more. Another good reason not to use fusibles, I think. Line up your underarms, going all the way around here. What is that? Well, it doesn't show on the outside, so we'll leave it. Just make sure you're keeping your strap nice and flat so you don't get a weird angle. And I'm just going all the way around. Three eighths, all the way. Oops. Just like that. All right, and now I'm gonna trim it. And then turn it. I'm gonna clip my corners. And then I'm going to, oh, I was gonna edge stitch my strap. I'm distracted here. I'm gonna clip my armhole here. Remember the more clips, you'll get a smoother curve. Right side out. I'm 
I always like to push my corners. And the reason I clip this is because remember, all of this is going into the bodice like this. When it's all inside there, it, it illustrates why you need to reduce the bulk right there. I made a, um, well, I'm going to an open house today. I almost forgot. And I made a, I made a cherry pie the other day <laughs> with a lattice top and everything like a pin cushion, <laughs> not a real one. That sounds really good though. Okay. So we have our little bodice. I'm going to go around and get my corners all nice, my all. like this. Oosh, I missed right there. There we go. I loved your timer too, Andrea, on your, like, the fact that you can put that little timer. You're so fancy. And your round webcam thing, that's crazy. I love round, round shapes, you know, gentler on the eye, you know? All right. So let's, let's iron this. Let's see how we did on our clip curve before my iron gets cool as well. I'm going to iron it from this side so that I can see that, um, I'm getting, so I can see a little bit of my outer bodice. dress is really cute. I actually wouldn't mind one in my size. I don't know. It's a little juvenile, I know, but what do you, what do you think? Like, I think like there's been a few women's pinafore patterns out lately, you know, where it's like you wear it over a shirt. I just like that idea. Like it can be kind of versatile. You have to have the right shirt then though. I think I need more water in my hair. This is looking pretty cute. All right, so this right here, you see this? This is one of my pattern no-nos. <laughs> Some, something I harp on. It should be a right angle right here. This should, or at least should be a smooth curve. The skirt doesn't do that. It doesn't go up right there, you know? Like, come on. You know what I mean, jelly beans? You know what? I this is natural lighting. I just heard that. Oh, Cheeky Crafts is hosting my stream on Twitch. Thank you. Welcome everybody. We are um, sewing a child's dress right now by Poppy and Jazz Patterns and it is called the Willow Pinafore. And this fabric is super cute. Yeah, this is all natural light right now, so to fit. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I use, um, but those, I got like a three set of box lights and I fully recommend them. I, the ring lights are really cool, but um, I've never used one of those and I, I, the box light, I really like the light that it gives over everything and you can position them like over. And I used to use one like on me or over depending, you know, and I adjust my brightness on my camera. Like right now, this is a little bright, but I do adjust the brightness on the, like in the configure thing. Sometimes they're telling me to turn it down because it doesn't probably look as bright on my screen as it does theirs. All right. So we have our little bodice. We have our little skirt. Um, I'm going to now add all the gathering stitches. That's looking pretty cute though, eh? <laughs> I 
All right. I'm going to lengthen my stitch and um, I'm going to put two rows of gathering stitches along this waist, but I'm going to break it at the side seams so I don't have to gather the entire waist all in one. There actually is a little point here, but still, it's not necessary. I know, these fabrics are so cute. You're watching on a 55, that's too big to see me. <laughs> That'll make me blush, don't tell me things like that. <laughs> I know Ray does too. She watches on her living room TV. I like to break it at the side seam mainly because um, sometimes when you try and go, you're gathering stitches over the side seams, it's a little bulky right there and it'll break and then you're kind of up a creek, right? <laughs> when you've broken one of your gathering stitches. The only issue with this is when you're trying to add them and they're intersecting, because I also find that gathering stitches work much better when you intersect them here. Otherwise you'll have a flat spot right here. So I need to start my next one kind of behind this. And I think what I'll do is I'll only put one going past and intersecting and then that way it's not so tricky. Because of my thread clip, I have to like pull my machine out. So this one I'll, I'll probably put closer and in maybe in between these two rows here. It's awkward. It's awkward for everybody. With this kind of narrow seam allowance, it's it's pretty awkward. If you have a 5 8 inch seam, it's a lot easier to add all these rows. And it does seem like a lot of work. And this is definitely an area when I was a newbie, I would totally skip I would do one row of gathering stitches. This is such a classic place. I would have been like, I don't have time for that, you know? Sorry, I keep slamming my uh, presser foot down. I'm trying to keep my thread tails out of the way. Oh, man. You can line your coat with a flannel, Terry. The only issues with flannel are that um, it doesn't glide over your clothing really easily. So it can be a little bit cumbersome to put it on if the coat isn't very loose. But um, I would definitely line it, you know, like rayons are nice, but they don't last as long as some other fabrics, but they do glide and they are, um, you know, Come on, some great prints, and, but you can pretty much line it with a lot of options. What kind of coat are you making? You just want it to be warm. Let's see if it can, can I get a row above here. So I'm definitely outside the 3 8 inch seam allowance right there, but we can just pull out that gathering stitches, those gathering stitches when we've got the skirt sewn to the bodice. All right, so I put in two sets on each of these skirt panels here, and I always pull, like I always tell myself where I'm gonna pull, so I'm gonna pull from the front. I kinda say it out loud so I don't forget which one I pulled so that when I'm sewing, like when I'm done, and I wanna remove it, I know which ones to pull. And this is a linen cotton canvas, so it is a little heavier weight, but I don't think it's overly gathered. So now I stop and I kind of pick them up on this end. If I kept going only from this end, I would start pulling out my gathering stitch. It's kind of like when you um, pull one edge of the drawstring on your hoodie hood. If you only pull one end, then it pulls it all the way out. Oh, the, the pea coat. Are you starting that now? Your name keeps changing in shades of green, Terry. I was like, oh, is there two Terry E's here? Oh, nice Malin. Shetland wool interlining. Interlining. Holy moly, that's going to be nice and warm. Hi, Cheeky Crabs. How's it going? They're um, meerkats, Brooke. <laughs> Thanks for the host. How was your stream? Sorry, I my unified chat's not working, so I'm having to bounce between Twitch and YouTube. You might not even be here. You're probably like, I'm done streaming. I'm going to bed. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Where's my other edge here? Is this it right here? Yep. 
Always tough getting over that seam allowance there. Yeah, well, Sweden, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that sounds so nice. Yeah, where did you get your Shetland wool inner lining? I mean, you could use boiled wool as an inner lining. Swedish local fab fabric store. You might try somewhere like uh, Blackbird Fabrics, Terry. I mean, I'm not trying to promote them, but they're in Canada, so I was thinking maybe they might have some options for colder weather. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. She says she got Shetland wool as her interlining, Eliza. She says it's pretty fluffy. That'll be fun. I keep unthreading my needle. I'll just wait till the end. All right, here. Okay, I got those. Actually, wait, let's pull those out. I want to finish this section here. This one and right. This one. These ends are kind of far apart from each other. If you get a tricky spot where you're gathering where you're like, okay, I can't pull on one end, at least knot it so that if you have to keep pulling from the other end, you don't pull your gathering threads through. You can analyze it. it just depends on your fabrics like as far as like what they are sometimes I will lay like if it's a straight up inner lining that I'm not going to like I just want to treat it as one with the outer fabric um, then I just attach it so that it's nice and stable around all the edges and just sew all the perimeter edges. Oh there's a hood hack. Did you hear that, Megan? Um, not, not the um, other Megan, but wait, where's she? Where, Megan? I'm trying to remember. Megan Stein. There's a hood hack for the Sienna. Maybe you can use it for something. She was looking for a hood. Yeah, so you're going to put, yeah, see, you could do that, Malin. You can, you can use like a lining fabric for your lining, something s slick like you're saying, because you've already accommodated for the warmth factor on the interlining. And the Sienna doesn't have like tricky details like welt pockets where you're going to have to navigate that thickness, right? Oh, I don't have much here because this is my starting one. Now, if you're, you haven't started this yet, it's kind of nice to have your bodice handy and hold it up so that you know how much you need to do. Like, I've been kind of eyeballing it. This will actually work for the back. Here's my front. That's pretty good. And here's my back. All right, my back can do, on this side, could use a little more. <laughs> yeah you could do that Terry totally doesn't the Sienna have a, a lining already all right so um, I'm gonna attach my uh, button facing right now this guy right here because I'm only going to put it on the skirt. And so I'm going to clean finish my skirt bodice to the um, skirt. Now you can do this a few different ways, but I am going to sew my lining to the inside of the skirt, turn it to the right side, turn under the bodice and stitch it down. That's my plan right now. Um, because I'm not doing the button band that they have going, I'm only going to attach it to the skirt. I, I should have done this already. I was thinking, oh, I'll do it after I attach it to my skirt. I don't know why I was thinking that. So I'm going to attach it to just the skirt. And I'm going to sew it at the seam allowance. Am I 
facing, this little button facing here isn't cut to the right length quite yet. And that's because I, uh, my pattern wasn't properly, like it looks like the pattern accidentally got lopped off at the bottom. So I just allowed extra. And plus I'm cutting off the bodice portion of it anyway. Oh wow, a detachable flannel line, wow. Oh, it is unlined, okay. I was wrong about that. But drafting a lining is pretty easy. It just depends on how the neckline and the, the center front is treated. Because you can just use your back and your fronts and your sleeves as is. You just have to deal with where it gets sewn to the perimeter edge, right? You just need to allow for the lining not to show to the outside. So I'm just attaching this little button band. And oh, I'm kind of thinking a few things right now. All right, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm gonna surge my, I wasn't going to surge this edge. I kind of wanted to clean finish it like this. You know, it's honestly probably, well, let's see. I'm trying to think like, so you could have put your button band on and then added your gathers. The way I'm going to sew this, it would have been fine to do that originally. Just saying. So these can get gathered up with that. So I'm going to stitch this down. I'm, I'm doing one side at a time because I'm, I'm like figuring it out as I go. But I am going to cut this off right here. And I'm going to edge uh, under stitch my facing right now. There's no interfacing because of the linen cotton canvas. But if your fabric is lighter weight, you, you'll want some interfacing in this little button band here. And now I'm going to turn it and I'm going to top stitch it down. You can just overlock this edge and leave it hanging. That's fine too, but I, I'm going to, I'm going to be more stout about it. It'll wrinkle less and be less fiddly if I stitch it down. And that's why I'm going to do that. Oh, but I really want, Ooh, 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 ooh. I really want to finish my, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to do this. Sorry guys. I'm off the rails here. Firstly, we're going to turn this back on itself like this. We're going to stitch. We're going to fold this under. I'm folding this under because I'm going to stitch it down. But if you surge this edge, you don't need to fold it under. And I'm going to stitch across here where I'm putting the hem. Just like that. And now I'm going to, I'm going to cut this little bit off right here. I'm going to cut the rest of my button facing off just like that. And now I have a nice clean finished edge right here. And I'm kind of doing these in a few different orders right now. So you could have surged this edge here. I'm going to turn mine under like this. So let's go back to our other facing over here. We're kind of bouncing back and forth. Sorry. Yeah. What pattern are you using Terry? I can't remember what she's using. So I'm going to sew my button band at the 3 8 inch seam. And I'm going to turn under the edge. So it at the hemline. I'm going to check my other skirt front or back. I mean, it's the back skirt to see if I have the same length right now. Like this, like this. And then we're going to cut out this corner here. It's basically the corner of the canvas that you're cutting off right there. Let's reinforce this corner. Good 
because I, I'd like to, I was going to clip it right here like that, and I want to reinforce it. All right, make sure your corner's turned. And now I'm going to hem my skirt. I know I'm doing this in a weird order, but it's not weird. Vogue 8940. <laughs> Melin, are you really excited about making it? That's awesome. Sounds like yours is going to be amazing. All right. Look at those little meerkat faces. It's like they're poking their heads up out of the hole just to look on the hem. <laughs> Lots of threads. What's that red thread from? Oh, I think that's from the um, peppered cotton. Kids clothes, you don't have to be as worried about the hem as far as length goes because usually you're more concerned that they're going to outgrow it. So you can just use the full length if you want unless you're really trying to, like maybe for a wedding, you know, your kids in the bridal party, you know, then you're like, okay, I really want this to fit them perfectly that day, you know. That's what's great about sewing kids clothes. You don't have to worry about fit. You can get your skills better um, sewing all kinds of techniques and you don't have to worry about the fit right off the bat, you know? All right, and now I'm gonna finish. Oh, did I forget my understitch? Oh man, I forgot my understitch. This is one of those times I was saying the other day how sometimes you can't get all the way to the corner. Like say you're doing a collar, and that's okay. Sometimes the pattern doesn't warn you that that might happen and you're feeling like you're doing it wrong because you can't get all the way to the edge. I got all the, all the way to the edge on the other one. All right, Eliza? All right, so now I'm gonna stitch down my button facing and um, I'm gonna put some of these gathers back in here. Now I'll just adjust my gathers with this from the side seam over here. And now my skirt's going to be fully finished and all I have to do is attach the bodice. And the button band is nice and secure. It's not going to wrinkle up in the wash because it's flapping around like facings do, you know, like putting facings on kids clothes is a little, it's a little sophisticated for kids clothes and the way that they're going to be treated. And no one wants to iron kids clothes. It's like ironing your pajamas or your, you know, I don't know, things like that. Like I don't even want to iron my linens for my table, you know, but it's like the one that's a pet peeve when my linens are all like wrinkly. Like the hem, that just drives me nuts. I don't need to backstitch there. Let's get rid of my little threads here. And the other day, remember I did that nice little nifty trick where I came down and I turned right there. I couldn't really do that because I was kind of pitting one against the other, kind of back and forth there. But it is looking really nice and finished already. Let's make sure our gathers are back there under here.
Oh yeah, what color is your peacoat gonna be, Terry? I'm so excited you're making something for you. It's you, right? Those peacoats are no joke. I'm trying to get this a little better on the edge here. The peppered cotton is relaxing a little faster than the linen cotton canvas. So you can see a little bit of that happening right here. So I'm trying to keep it nice and flat, keep it even, keep it straight and ease it in. All right, this one turned out kinda okay. This one looks a little better over here. Now we have our little skirt. I'm gonna put our bodice on now. So like I said, I'm gonna start from the inside with the lining like this. And actually I'm gonna pin this from the gatherer's side. So I'm gonna pin all my little landmark spots, right? I'm gonna put this one here. Dang, I'm running out of pins on my pin cushion. I don't know how that happened. I'm gonna pin my side seams if I can find it. All my threads right here. Here's my other side seam right here. I've pushed my um, skirt side seams towards the back, but the bodice are pressed open. I thought that said chocolate covered. Oh, a chocolate colored pea coat. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Let's move this closer. So evenly distribute your gathers and make sure you get them into these little spots where you're like if you broke your threads like I did at these um, heavier junctures there, make sure you get them in there especially because that's where the flat spots tend to happen. And then um, always pin, with, especially with gathers, always pin perpendicular. It'll keep your gathers a little bit more tidy. Usually two rows of gathering stitches makes my gathers look a lot nicer than it does here. And I think that's partly because of the linen cotton canvas is a little thick. these bigger stretches because if see if you only had your one set of gathering stitches like this whole expanse all the way you'd have to be adjusting from all the way over here to get to the middle you need you know what i mean all right so where's the please say i marked the center i did right i always mark the center where is it what the heck oh there it is right there that's why I always do a little triangle uh, for centers on gathers especially so that it's easier to see. Same with when you're doing like surged seams. If you do like an angle, you can, you can almost, you have a better chance of seeing where that mark is rather than like a little slit because the slits get kind of lost, especially in gathers and surged edges. Post-surging, you can, might be able to see your little triangle still depending on what the edge is. See these little needles right here? Now I just thought of a trick the other day to pin them on my ruffle. You know? Like this. All right. We're almost there. We have two more seams, both on the waist. And so if you're sewing along with me, I'm clean finishing my bodice and they have you do that in the instructions, but they do it the reverse. They do it to where 
You sew the right side of the bodice to the right side of the skirt. That's totally fine. You could totally do that, but I find it's a little easier to do the next step when you can do it from the right side of the garment. You have a better chance of making it look how you want. All right. Oh, you know what I just learned this morning? I'm going to be home alone tonight. I'm so excited. You're taking your time, but you're sewing it all this week. That doesn't sound like taking your time, Terry. How old are your kids, Terry? If you don't mind me asking. <laughs> Hi, Julia. I don't know what you're, I, I'm sorry I missed your comment. My unified chat's not working, so I um, have to flip back and forth. All right, so because I can't obviously sew this clean finish like a pillow, like you where you put like both edges and then right sides together and then clean finish it, right? But you could if you wanted, especially if you're concerned with these little center front pieces, you could do it for a little ways like that, you know? but I'm, I'm just gonna do it only on one side. I'm not gonna wrap it. Ooh, I almost lost my needle. This thread is so lightweight, that's why, because I'm using home sewing thread right now. All right, so let's see, all my little thread, gathering threads, I'm gonna try and pull them up into the, the like raw edges of my seam allowance, like that. Now the bodice is pretty small. There's a good chance you can kind of get it flipped up and get caught. Try and flatten this out right here really nicely. So you get a nice good starting point and you kind of want to get this as close up to that edge as possible, no matter what way you're sewing it. And then you're gonna try and um, sew your 3 8 inch seam allowance and hopefully that's gonna encase all of your gathering stitches and a couple spots on mine, they're going to sneak out the bottom a little bit. So, oh, 18 and 13, wow. Yeah, I can't wait to see it too, chocolate brown pea coat. Look at how few pins I have on here. It's ridiculous. I'm gonna try and remember to take out my pins as I go. All right, making sure it's nice and flat underneath my bodice. Checking my gathers. I like using my awl actually for stuff like this. Cause if I have a little flat spot, maybe I want to create a gather. The awl is really great cause I can kind of like make it pleat up a little bit without my finger being the pleater. Oh, that's so funny. You have three kids, Melinda, all right. I knew Terry's boys were older because she, because uh, like she said the size once, and so I knew there were like at least one was almost adult. Your son's twenty six. That's not you're not old. Mine just turned seventeen. I'm forty eight, but I love the so over fifty account, and I hope to you know, I'm looking forward to being it, being part of the club. <laughs> I just turned forty eight and a half on my daughter's birthday. I'm getting there. This canvas is, this canvas wasn't hard to gather, but it's not as like lovely to gather as like poplin. You know how poplin, the gathers are just nice and orderly and they're straight up and down. These look a little bit more um, bumpy, you know? 
but it is a great fabric like the the weight of the dress is going to feel so nice because of the linen cotton canvas I've made a I made a bias cut skirt I have this pattern that I made that is just like you can get a, a like a bias cut skirt in mostly a yard of fabric and I did use this fabric once and it worked really great um, it's so scratchy though I'm really surprised I think it's the linen in it and now it's gotten softer and softer with wash all right I'm at the center front or center back sorry I get this nice and flat so I can really see um, lining up that edge because this is kind of one of those details that really makes your your um, button front look good button back sorry you're 45 I'm 48 yeah yours are 34 and 32 yeah yeah see Glenn I'm older than you <laughs> age is so funny isn't it like I feel like age doesn't matter but I love thinking about it you know like it's such a weird thing like it does seem like it it probably to some people thinks it does th they probably think it does matter to me but i just find it really interesting because you can do the same thing at one age as you can at another as far as like accomplishments go so if you can't really judge by age right we're all equal that way all right let's look at how i did here so here's my inside some of my gathering stitches probably the bobbins are hanging out and some of this peppered cotton That's okay. So we can get rid of some of these little threads here, but I'm gonna pull them from the right side. Let's see, this is already looking nice and clean finished right here. And my gathers all look okay. So I'm actually gonna try and remove a lot of my gathering stitches. This probably makes you kind of go snore every time I do this, but I really like it. I like removing them so that I can safely remove them from the other side as well. And I can't really pull the bobbin because it'll just lock it up. This is this that one goes that way. Oh, yeah, these are go the same. Okay. You don't have to remove them. I just like it. I like making a big old mess. All right, let's get rid of some of these threads here if I need to. This is all going to get put into the bodice. You can trim it a little bit if it's a, an issue, but you could probably spend, you know, half your life trimming this kind of thread. Um, but it's going to be in the bodice, so it's not a big deal. Wow, that's really cool, Eliza. When my mom turned 50, I turned 30, and my sister turned 18, all the same year. So we went on a trip to the UK. It was really fun. It was a little trying too. Okay, now I'm putting all these little thread things inside my bodice, and I don't wanna do that because you'll feel them as little lumps, so try and keep it clean in there. That peppered cotton is wanting to shed a little bit. All right. Let's go to this thread right here. All right, so now I'm going to look at these. I'm going to get rid of these because they'll be really easy to remove now. Just do your best. I, I think that this is something I always struggled with when I was doing gathered waste was my gathering thread showing on the outside um, or it bending down, you know. 
like it getting crumpled and then like a little bit of your skirt folding up like this and getting caught in there like that. That used to happen to me a lot when I was new. So it's totally normal. And some of these I'll just go back and get rid of the ones, my uh, gathering stitches that dipped below my seam line. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> How's it going? I met you in the stream yesterday on Soda Fits. Nice to see you. <laughs> I'm streaming live on Twitch and YouTube, so I kind of flip between the two um, to make sure most people are over here on YouTube. But I always feel bad when I miss a comment over there. All right, so it's our last seam. So here we are. Here's a little bodice front. And then we have our uh, waist seam. So now I'm going to turn under this edge and clean finish it right to the waistline. And so um, you could spend your time like ironing this and pinning it under, but you could also just pin your bodice really close. Like make sure it's nice and flat up here, right? Get it nice and flat and close. So you know that everything above it, you can trust it, right? It'll be okay. Nothing wrong with like pinning it too. I do that too sometimes with you guys. But this is such a nice little tiny bodice. I think we can get away with just doing it on the fly. And that's just because um, it's such a nice short distance to manage right here. All right. And now because I'm doing this on the right side of the garment, I can control exactly how it's gonna look. You do wanna get it as close as possible. I hate threading my needle in front of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Harcheri? Wow, that's awesome. Well, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Welcome. All right. So now here we are at that juncture so that you can see now why you really want to get this as close to that edge right there as possible because no matter how close you get it, sometimes you still have this little bump there. I got really good at getting rid of that bump for a while there because I was sewing a lot of things with it. And I'm a little rusty now. But see here, see how I've pinned the bodice down here as close as possible, right? That way I know I can trust it and I can just turn this under as I go. And I'm gonna use my awl so I can kind of pull it a little bit as well. Make sure you cover up that edge with the seam, that exposed stitching. And try and stitch it as close to the edge as possible, but nice and evenly away. And then no one will ever know you did, did it this way. If you, if you stitch too high, like you're a little nervous about stitching down on this edge here and say you're like up here, can you see that? Like even, a, even like less than an eighth of an inch, you can flip the edge up and see in there. So you kind of want to prevent that. I shouldn't have paused right there. Now I think I have a little hiccup back there. And then you have all your landmarks, you know, your side seam right here, which is lining up really nice. I'm not going to worry about removing these pins yet either. I'm just going to focus on what I'm doing here. Nobody is too old. We're all just right, in my opinion. I'm finding the, like, I hang out a lot in a lot of different worlds age-wise, you know? Because you guys know that I like to game and stuff. And so I do hang out with some young folks regularly. And um, I also only use Twitter to follow gamers. And so I don't really participate much on there. I just like to see what's going on. And the whole like, okay boomer thing is really big over there. And um, 
I think it's really funny. Like they're saying that there's companies that are putting in these policies that are like, oh, you can't say that it's age discrimination. And at first I was like, yeah. And then later on I was kind of like, well, I mean, you know, we're kind of hard on young people too, you know? And there's all this, this millennial bashing, right? So in a way I'm kind of like, it's kind of working both ways, you know? And we need each other. We need the expertise of the experienced and we need the innovation of the experienced and of those who just think differently because they've grown up in a different environment and world and exposed to different things and technologies. They go about the world differently. But it always cracks me up when younger folks put down older people and my response is always like, but I can do whatever I want. I can buy whatever I want, you know, like within reason, of course. But like, if I want to go and get a candy bar or kind of ice cream or a beer, yeah, I don't drink beer, but <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, I can do whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. And I, you know, and, and because of like having the experiences I have, I got good at something, you know? So I feel like the last laugh's on them. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do right here when I'm coming, approaching, what's that right there? Did you see that? It was like a little pucker. I think I caught a thread from this seam right here and it was pulled up into the hem. So you see this edge right here, how I was talking about lining it up at the, cent the center back waist on the other side. So one of my tricks is to, I'm relaxing it because I had, was I was pulling those threads, it was kind of pulled, is to turn this under, this bodice edge, and I'm gonna push it that way a little bit, like exaggerate it, because as I approach it, my presser foot is gonna push it. And it's going to push it off the edge if I'm not careful. It might do that anyway, because it is kind of thick right here. It wants to do it anyway. You know, I can maybe pin it and try and prevent it and say, this is where you're going to be at this point. This is where I want you, you know. But I like to kind of push over exaggerate and push it that way. That way I won't push it off the edge and make it look misaligned, you know. It's a little trickier to sew right in that little spot, but as long as you make it to your pin, you're golden, you know. I barely caught my edge there though. I may need to go back. Wouldn't it have been a bummer to run out of thread right there? But that looks pretty darn good. You know? Getting older does beat the alternative. What games? Um, I play on PlayStation. So I play, right now I've been playing, um, let's see. I play a mix of things. I like multiplayer games because I like playing with people, like friends and stuff. I'm really bad. <laughs> but like my favorite game is The Last of Us, which is a single player game. It has a multiplayer component that's awful because people are awful <laughs> and they're mean. But um, I do play Fortnite and I've been playing that since it came out. I even pre-ordered it, so I've had it a long time. Um, I play Plants vs. Zombies. I love the that franchise a lot. And... I've been playing, I got a game for my, for Christmas last year and I just started playing it and it's the, one of those Assassin's Creed's and, and it's like the historical stuff is so cool. It's called Odyssey. So it's all in like, um, Greece and, um, the, the historical stuff is really cool and all the little like side missions are really cool. And I'm playing as a woman named Cassandra, which I don't know if you've, you know, read some of those books. It's really great. It's pretty fun. Single player. Uh, what else do I play? Um, I feel like I'm missing a big one. I can't think of it, but that's what I play. I haven't played very many games yet. All right, this looks pretty darn good. I'm actually pretty pleased with that. No one will know I sewed that from the right side, right? Let's see how it looks on the inside. So on the inside, sometimes I hit the bodice and sometimes I didn't, but I'm okay with that because this is on the inside. Look at that, man. I hit, I stitched in the ditch. It looks like, that looks good, but I wish it could always look like that, but it doesn't. Because see here, I'm on the waist a little bit. 
but that's a nice way to do when you have to do cuffs um anything where you have to clean finish it with a big like binding anything like that oh that's awesome julia i mean yeah right it is a really great way to connect with people who play games and if they're your kids then playing with them is more fun than not you know my daughter did the same for me she played fortnite to play with me And it was, it was kind of fun. And my friends wanted to friend her so bad. I was like, she won't accept you. <laughs> you know, like they want my, one of my friends, um, and he wasn't because he wanted to like date her. He just, he's really a people person. But there were a couple of young guys that were like, oh, really your daughter? And I'm like, gross, just stop. It's kind of funny. Yeah, so um, Harry Potter came up with a, of there's a Harry Potter version of Pokemon Go and I love it, but I don't I haven't been playing it with that very much, you know. So isn't it, Sherry? It's really cute. This is the back of it, by the way, and so it has a whole. Um, all right. So one thing I forgot to tell you guys was to make sure you match your bodice up, and I think I got pretty lucky there. So making sure that that matches before you do your last scene was probably really smart. So it does have this fold button back, and I really think you could put this on the fold and this on the fold on the center back line and cut them as one, and only have these little guys as your buttons and buttonholes there. And it has these cute little pockets with a little pleat. It's called the um, Willow Pinafore by Poppy and Jazz Patterns. And um, this is uh, an offshoot of Sew Over It. Yeah, right, Julia? I know, you do. You get rewarded for walking. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same in Harry Potter where you cast spells and um, you get, um, when you walk, you get port keys and then once you've walked enough, you unlock the port key and then you like place it on the ground and you walk through a little portal and you're in like Hagrid's hut and you're tapping Raxberts. It's super cute. Here's a better picture of it, Sherry. You can see... Sorry, it's a little overexposed. My camera is a little bright. So the left is the front view and the back is the, the right is the back view. I'm getting punchy. Yeah, it would, Malin. We, we just did a dress like that though, right? Was the, um, what did we just sew, you guys? Uh, rah, 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 rah. Oh, but that was on the back as well, wasn't it? What the heck did we just sew, like last week? <laughs> Aw, what is that pixelation? Does it not like my fabric? My sometimes, I don't know, I doubt Andrea is still here, if she is, I don't know, but um, if you are, do you ever get that? Like sometimes with really busy fabrics, my camera will start doing this really weird thing and I finally figured out it's the fabric that makes it do that. Like I have to break it up a little bit. Put different things on the camera. You're here. Yeah. Do you ever have that where like if um, like I just had this all the way up here and it was starting to do see it. And then when I pull it off, it's fine. Weird. I hate tech stuff. I don't hate it, but I do it, like I want things to look really good. And so it's so when I can't control something, it kind of frustrates me. This is really cute, you guys. I wish this fit me. Yeah. Yeah, well that was different. Like it's like a it's like a, a error. No one's here in the building and I have like 50 download, 50 upload internet speed. It's pretty great. My Wi-Fi stinks. <laughs> but my internet connection is really good here. <laughs> I can stream Twitch or a live stream on every device in my studio. Right, exactly. We want it to look good. <laughs> I mean, if you ever watch some live streamers, um, the lighting, everything is such a struggle. And I knew like for me, like I, my audience isn't gonna to tolerate that. Like you and I know, right? You wanna be able to see what's happening. 
Okay, so do you guys wanna go over the gift thing we're doing? So we're sewing gifts when I come back after next week. So just in case you're a late, um, I wanted to show you guys. But this is the Willow Pinafore, and thanks Hearts Fabric for letting us sew it. It's super cute, it's gonna look cute. And then they, they got, where's my little red shirt? So the, even though these are different sizes, this is how they're gonna display it. Cause I talked with them. I was like, are you sure you don't want these the same size? We did this little knit t-shirt today too. <laughs> Those straps look like they're in the wrong spot, but they're, it's just cause the back's not overlapped right. I'm not gonna do the buttons and buttonholes on the camera today. <laughs> it really brings out the little red cactus. <laughs> <laughs> your crew awesome thanks <laughs> all right so um that was really fun so let's see here where is that oh here we go so the first week of december i know it's so cute it's gonna look cute in their store the first week of december um i'll pull up my calendar again just in case some of you missed it so for December, this is my new thing, Andrea. I'm trying to give a month out because there's some folks that have emailed and said, hey, I, sometimes I wanna sew along with you and it would be really nice to know to have all my stuff ready, cut out and ready to go so I can sew when you're doing it. So I'm trying to do my calendar near the beginning of the month. It's hard, but um, it's actually been really great for me. So I'm only streaming again three weeks in December. That first week is, I'm gonna do the gift sewing. The next week we're going to revisit our bodice slopers. And so you have time, you guys, you have three weeks, two weeks really, to draft your bodice sloper. And remember, just go back to one of the videos and you can see, or one of the Instagram posts. You get the measurement thing on my webpage. And you can draft your own custom front and back bodice to your measurements. And then we're gonna start, as long as everybody's fittings are going okay, we're gonna start the sleeve that week. Then we'll have our bodices and we're gonna start doing pattern drafting streams for us. And then uh, the next week we're gonna do the Cascade Duffel Coat by Grainline Studio. Sorry about my typo there. <laughs> and then we'll take a week off and then I'll be back the next, the year. Yes, Julia, yeah, you gotta catch up, come on. All right, and then the week we're doing the gift sewing, I'm gonna stream five days in a row. I'm actually gonna, I'm really excited about that, but you know, I wanna be prepared. So we're going to be doing, Tuesday we're gonna cut everything out. I'm gonna cut everything out. Wednesday we're gonna do um, the little DOP kit, like boxy bag and Patreon subscribers are gonna get the pattern for that. Thursday is sponsored by Hearts Fabric and they sent us the, um, one yard bias apron pattern by decades of style since we had a little bit of a domestic theme going and Dec decades of style is also sponsoring that because they're friends with them and they said i'll give her the pattern and then on friday we're going to do and i'm going to show you my samples here the, a little fingertip oven mitt that i'm still working on the pattern and then some dish carriers for when you go to like a potluck or something and then saturday i'm going to be sewing my cupcake and pie slice pin cushions for, and I'm gonna let people know who bought the pattern they can join in. And then um, I just wanted to remind you guys that if you're signed up on the newsletter, you do get that free Notions case pattern. That's from chicken, the Chicken Boots line. So I made the calendar on, um, stop it camera, on Canva. I was, think I told you about that. I really love that site. It's great. Makes me feel like a genius with graphics. <laughs> so like that on that calendar, I'll just tell you, Andrea, uh, the background, there were no trees, so I just put, I imported a graphic with the tree, not imported, I just looked in their graphics, put two tree things on the left and on the right. I added little dots as a border. I added a white box on the background of like each week behind the text so that the, the little lines of each day didn't interrupt it. I put my little graphic on there. I put all that. So um, it's so easy to customize it. I really love it. Okay. So then, um, like I said, we're doing the gifts. And so here's a, the start of the little fingertip oven mitt right now. And so I'm experimenting with putting a piece of elastic in there so you can really feel like it's as secure and it's right up against your hand. I'm gonna fill this in a little bit here. 
but I really want a secure oven mitt. You know what I mean? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, here's the little dot kit. It's just a boxy bag. Nothing new, but this way you don't have to buy a pattern and this will be on the Patreon for Patreons patrons. That's such a weird word for me. Every time I say it, it sounds wrong. And then the dish carriers, these are patterns I used to make and sell. Um, so, you know, these are great. People don't know they need this until they have it. And they're like, oh, that's really helpful. So there's one for a round dish. This is kind of the one that's a little, I don't know, it's really cute and it's more fun to sew, but it does take a lot of fabric. So this is a great, these are great stash busting things because if you have like big pieces of fabric, especially if you only need like the top to look cute and maybe the strap or the background, then the rest of it you can use, use stash busting things. So, um, and then we have that one yard bias apron and then this is my scrappy old pie pin cushion, but you guys have seen these at length. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't need me to pull those out. Yeah, we kind of, I actually asked everybody, I didn't get to fit in like a cup cozy or an iPad, iPhone stand or phone and iPad stand. Um, so I'm sorry about that, you guys, that I didn't get those included. But I do want to make sure that um, we, we can like sit there and maybe do a few together. So I'm hoping some of you are going to sew along with me for once, like the actual thing I'm sewing. And then maybe I'll make two or three depending on our time, you know, and then that way you'll have a few, right? So if you sew along with me and you get your stuff and you get ready and you're kind of ready to go best you can, because I know you're, you know, you're not going to have as much time to get ready as I am. Um, you'll at least have some gifts by the end of the week. And I know you guys got to work too. So I, I understand that. So <laughs> you guys have to like go to work and stuff. You can't just stay home and sew all day. It's the life. So, but maybe some of them you can. All right. Well, that's it. You guys we're done. Have a fantastic week. I'm going to miss you guys so much. Feel free to, um, shoot me messages and work on your bodice slopers. Go to my website, download the measurement thing. And if you want the like text version of the how to, which is also in the videos, you can subscribe on Patreon to get it. And it's, you know, something can follow along, makes it a little easier. And because eventually you're going to want this bot bodice because we're going to be able to draft patterns with it. Awesome, Sherry. <laughs> I know it's kind of late to kind of come up with this. We're, we're just, we're, we're all spur of the moment though here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you guys. And um, if you're celebrating Thanksgiving, have a great Thanksgiving or whatever you're doing. Um, just having the week off. I'm going to be working, I will admit, but I needed a few days because the pattern things are getting kind of high intense work wise. So yes, awesome. Yes. All right, you guys. Well, I really appreciate it. Let me make sure. Thanks for coming over to um, YouTube, Julia. <laughs> oh, you're back over there on Twitch. You, <laughs> you guys did Pokemon raids and now, oh, that's right, you guys did. That's so awesome. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye, Megan. Bye, Glenn, Malin, Eliza, Vicky, Sherry, Andrea, Julia, Brooke. Who am I missing? Another Megan. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. Have a great weekend, and I will see you on December 3rd. We're going to be cutting everything out. All right? Sound good? Bye, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs>